make sure that my Twitch is muted. Hold on. It'd be really awkward if it isn't. Sorry if everyone could hear me clicking. I forgot to change the sub goal again. It's fine. Hello! Hello, Dylan Active. As you can see, you're always one of the first people, and it's always so lovely to see you. Hello, hello! I am right now just posting my promos and making sure that I can see chat properly from both sides of me so that I don't miss anything. Um, I have a little phone stand that's like. <laughs> Hold on. Oh my god, I forgot. Coochie Patchy. Hold on. My back support. Ugh, where would I be without my back support? Poof, the illusionist arrives. Welcome in, everybody. Oh, thank you. I know, I've, I actually like the colors I'm going for with this now. Before, I was a little hesitant because I wasn't a huge fan, but I made some tweaks today, and I'm much better, or I'm much more confident with the direction I'm going with the colors, so I'm trying to finish the line art for it, though. That's, if I can finish the line art and start blocking the colors tonight, that'd be awesome. Um, because this is a commission, I'm trying to finish my commissions. Ugh, God, at least before they're a year old, that would be embarrassing. I think I'll get there, like, I literally only have three left after this one. Um... I just, after the move and stuff, I fell into such an art slump. Also, is the music volume okay? If it's quiet, that's fine. I err on the side of being quiet. Welcome in, everybody. Oh, oh, I was saying about my phone stand, though. I already got distracted. Legendary. Legendary behavior. So, because the screen with chat that Forrest, like, on Forrest's computer is kind of far away, I have this little phone stand, and I've had it for a while. I have a bunch of cat stuff on my desk um but this is like one of my this is one of the most practical ones um it's a phone stand that looks like a little calico kitty cat and its arms are out like this and then it's butts up so it's like stretching with its tail out um but there's like an area in the center for where you can put your phone um like this let's see i think its legs are like this but the tail, because of how it's positioned, will like hold the phone while it's like tilted back. And this is how I read chat, is that I just have this little kitty cat holding my phone next to me. It's very cute. Have a good stream. The colors in this piece look great. Have a nice night, everyone. Oh, I'm sorry that you can stay the hopes. I hope it's not too late there for you. Sorry, I'm also just trying to change the brightness on my phone screen. I don't know how it always gets so dark. Do not drown them. Oh, good God. I'm already being drowned. Sigh. That's all right. I probably need it. I apologize if I seem a little lower energy today. I don't know, because I was a, I was last stream too. And I don't think that I won't be able to like keep drawing or anything. Because drawing, I don't know. Drawing I can do just fine. Um, I just, I woke up this morning and my tummy really hurt. And it was hurting like all morning. Um... And I was like, I was pulling out all the resources. I had peppermint tea. I had a probiotic drink. I uh, made sure to drink a whole bunch of water. I took a Tums. I ate breakfast. I actually ate every single meal today, despite having a tummy ache. Um, I feel a little better now, but it just got to the point of like where my, oh, I'm PST. I just pop in. I will watch the VOD. Oh, thank you, the hopes. <laughs> hmm. But yeah, I did everything I could and it feels a little bit better now, but now I'm in that like post not feeling good kind of like I just won a battle sleepiness. So um, if that's if I seem that way, it's because I'm God's strongest tummy ache soldier today. Also, it's one of the bad ones where like the tummy ache like spreads up into your back and like your lower back starts to hurt. Like it was it was that kind of like uncomfy. Must be something in the air because I've also been feeling bad. I live on the other side of the world. It is, it's tummy, tummy ache day. Tummy ache, tummy ache, uh, hell war. Forest wasn't feeling too good yesterday either. I don't know if it's like there's a bug going around or if it's something we ate. Because we don't always eat the same meals, so I don't know what it would be. Um, oh my god, my eraser's huge. Wait, it's huge and it's soft. I don't know why. I never use the soft shade eraser.
It's okay, we just started. Oh, don't no, don't worry. Don't worry about being late, Varyal. We really did just start, and I'm just talking about having a tummy ache, so you didn't miss anything that much. Um, I did finally figure out the wings and how I wanted to draw them, so I can move forward with that too. It just means that I have to draw more of the window behind them. Um, but that's fine, honestly. I have no trouble with that at all. If anything, I might start color blocking just for funnies just to be silly yeah the colors definitely look a lot better i don't i just changed a few values and made it a little more saturated because i asked forest what he thought was up with it and he says well it looks like it's pretty dark and i was like okay dark is fine because when it gets like gloomy and rainy outside there's not a lot of strong light sources so dark's okay but typically when people that aren't artists say dark they mean like desaturated um, cause like, for example, if you took like this yellow and put this here, it's a pretty saturated like orange yellow, but then you put this right next to it, that's dark. It is dragged down a bit, but I have a feeling if I, oh god, I have to sneeze. Achoo! Ugh. If I were to do this, and I were to bring the saturation of that those colors down to, um, to... Yeah, okay, they're pretty close. So, like, that's what I mean, right? Like, they're... Technically, these two colors are very similar in, like, darkness, so to speak. But because this one's less saturated, it looks, like, it looks darker, even though it's pretty close. It's not exactly the same, but that was just for my eyeballing. So, can't all be, can't all be perfect. Thank you. Yeah, the commissioner said they kind of wanted the vibe of like being in reading on a stormy or like rainy day with your Pokemon and a cup of tea. And I was like, okay, I can definitely do that. I will do my best. <laughs> Compared to Forest, your sneezes are tiny. I know. The way that he sneezes scares me. Like, not I'm scared of him, but it's like, does it, I know it hurts him, and I don't know how he can't control it. I'm Because, like, if I wanted, I could sneeze, like, just out loud, loudly sneeze for all to hear. So the idea of, like, a sneeze that you can't stop or, like, change the ferocity of is frightening to me. It's like, what happens if we're, like, in a zombie apocalypse scenario and you have to sneeze? Are we all gonna die? <laughs> I know that's like a, a goofy ass thing to be worried about, but that's like the first thing that came to my mind. All right, where are you not a close? Oh, the foot, the foot's not closed. Okay, well, I'll do these first. Getting an ad break and it says three of six. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry if it makes you guys feel better. This is how I pay for the, the supplies that I use to make merch. So it feeds back into itself. At some point down the- oh, I have to change this from saturation or I'm gonna regret it. Blah. Or I should say supplies to make new merch because, you know, whenever you make something and you don't know if people are gonna buy it, it's a- it's a investment. Personal investment. Got sprayed by a skunk yesterday after listening to a recent VOD of yours while watching my cats outside. I'm so sorry. That sounds awful. I've never been, I've never been, oh god, knock on wood. I've never been sprayed by a skunk before. Skunk smell is not like the worst in the world to me, but it's not pleasant. I think just cause like, um, uh, I'm looking for a good word to use for this. I was a college student. I had friends that were enjoyers of the devil's lettuce and so skunk smell doesn't really bother me because not when you're a college student and you're doing that kind of thing not all of what you get smells very nice some of it smelled really nice actually most of the time i thought the first time i ever um was friends with someone that smoked i thought that they were cooking um because i was like oh who's making pasta because i thought it was oregano like i thought that it smelled like oregano and so i was like oh someone's making dinner and i asked i asked for some because you know freshman year of college you don't have a lot of food come in and someone's making a big pot of pasta and you're like ooh, can i have some and they all looked at me and they're like it's not pasta and i was like what the, what the hell are you doing then and they were like uh are you a narc and i was like no i've never been a narc in my life 
Ah, uh, it was really funny though. The Forbidden Oregano. It was, but then actually what that wound up what wound up spark like what that wound up sparking is that whenever um that group of guys would smoke and they would just start cooking pasta because the RA also thought that they were cooking pasta. And so the RA would come in and be like, ooh, cooking something good? Can I have some? And then they would give the RA pasta and that's how they never got caught. Uh, is that they the, the, the RA just thought they really, really liked cooking. My friends were like, you're getting cartoon characters sprayed like that. But yeah. The RA never caught them because they were just really friendly and they always offered like a re so they I guess they just thought they were a bunch of really friendly hungry guys and to be fair they were hungry just not <laughs> not organically I guess It does also make sense to like prepare a big dinner if you're about to start doing such things instead of going out and buying a bunch of junk food pasta heads <laughs> I wish the people that smoked in my dorm were that smart. Yeah, I was gonna say, I mean, I've had people that were not smart that I lived near. I've had people that would blow smoke directly into the ventilation system and I like wanted to <laughs> crawl in there horror movie style and get them because I'm like, I'm trying to sleep. Um, but I typically I like the smell of smoke, just like within moderation, you know? I'm also, uh, cigarette smoker baby, smoker's baby though, so like I really shouldn't be consulted for what I think is like a reasonable level of smoke because I will like walk by pubs and stuff and like sniff and I'm like, ah, someone's smoking Marlboros and <laughs> my friends will like start wheezing and hacking up along and I'm just like, oh, sorry, I forgot I was the freak here. I think gasoline, see I don't like gasoline smell but I do know uh, that people don't like- or sorry, I do know that people like the smell of gasoline, I'm just not among your ranks. I- I believe in your beliefs, though. Oh, I just realized I forgot how to post a promo to Instagram. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe I will a little later. It's not dire. I really think I cooked with these ears. I got the dimensionality of, like, them very well, which I'm surprised. This is normally something that would trip me up. And considering I need to add a little red to that face area, I'm actually gonna put this above the green. There you go. Ah, ah. Get in there. There we go. I think it goes, hold on, typically the nostril like touches the eye, which is why we don't see it. I'm gonna assume that it rounds. Hi, this is my first time catching a, a stream. I hope you, everyone is well. Thank you, Cupid's Grenade. I like your username. Whenever I sniff rain, it smells like gas, and I'm like, I hate... Oh, wait, sorry, I'm misreading. It smells like gas, and I'm like, I hate it. My friends like it, so I'm kind of just there. Ah, I'm sorry. I see. Actually, that's one that everyone says they like. Uh, everyone I I ever knew growing up was like, oh, I love the smell of fresh rain, and I never understood this as a kid because whenever it rained where I lived, it would smell like fish or like worms, and. I, I was a fisherman when I grew up, like my dad would take me fishing all the time, so I don't mind fish smell, but I don't like worm smell, and so like, I, whenever it would rain and people are like, ah, I love the smell of rain, and I'm like, what is your, what is wrong with you? This smells like straight up, it smells like straight up worms out here. Um, but then I moved and I lived somewhere else and it doesn't smell like that anymore. So I think maybe where I lived was just weird. <laughs> like, I think maybe we just had a lot of worms. And because of that, every time it rained, they would all come out and it would smell like worms. Very unique and localized problem to have. Worms have a smell. To be fair, everything has a smell, but I don't think that everyone can smell everything. I I have a really strong sense of smell, and I have my entire life to the degree where, like, I was just telling Ra this the other day. Um, if you take a cup of water, like an open face cup, something that doesn't have a lid, and you bring it outside, I can tell if you, and then you try to get me to drink it, I can tell that it's been outside. And it doesn't take very long. It takes maybe, like, 30 seconds to a minute. Um, I just, something about 
water going outdoors gives it a different smell. Um, and then, of course, like, you know, people have different smells. Um, and different animals smell different. Like, I would say I like the, how cats smell, but that's not true. There are some cats that smell really nice, and then there are some cats that don't smell good at all. Um, and that I don't think I've ever encountered a dog that I liked the smell of. I'm sorry, dog lovers. I like dogs, actually. That's one of my biggest pains, is that I think they're cute, but they just smell so bad. It's just a worm's world, and we're living in it. I have a sensitive smell, and I share a room with my... Oh my god, I share a room with my brother who has 3 a.m. tuna sandwiches. You are literally Atlas carrying the world on your back, because I would die. Far as, like, some foods that I really don't like the smell of, like, he also likes tuna sandwiches, but I'll just go to another room. I cannot imagine, like, being in a room with someone who eats it while I'm trying to sleep. I would wake up, like, shaking, shivering, crying, throwing up. I have to plug my nose when I feed the cats, because I really just, I cannot stand cat food smell. But I like, I like fish. Like, I like salmon. I like a lot of white fish. Um, I like crab. Basically anything that has a shell, I will eat it. The fluffy one smells like fur. Um, I was gonna say, our cats... Our cats basically, like, uh, harbor... Harbor smells kind of like library books, if anyone knows that. Like, okay, was anyone a library book smell huffer? Like, what the... Oh, lick you. Okay, sorry, it was why that get denied. Anyway, yeah, was anyone, like, a fan of the way that library books smelled? Because when I was a kid, I would straight up just go to the library to sniff books. And I would read them, too, but I would also be sniffing. I was, that, that was, like, <laughs> I was a chronic library book reader, so yes, yeah. And everyone talks about book smell. So, Harbor, our cat, like, the older cat and the tabby, he has book smell. Like, if you sniff his head... He smells kind of like a dusty old library book, and it's awesome. So whenever I cuddle with him, I will just, like, sniff cat smell because he smells nice. What's your absolute favorite smell? Ooh, I really like espresso. Like, I think espresso is probably my favorite smell. Um, it's because it's a nice smell. It smells clean, but it also smells like invigorating. I there are some smells that I like, but they make me really sleepy. So I wouldn't say they're like my favorites because I don't want to fall asleep. Um, but espresso is like a really nice smell. It wakes me up in the morning. I would say maybe right after that is like smoke, uh, which again is like my people look at me like I'm nuts for but again sorry my mom was a cigarette smoker so I I like the smell of smoke it's like oh this is the era of my life where my mom was nice to me and liked me um and then other than that I mean there's a lot of food smells right so I'm kind of avoiding saying food smells because those feel like cop-outs um like a good like baked cookie or like when garlic hits the pan while you're roasting it obviously those are amazing but like non-edible smells uh library books smoke uh i like sharpie smell but i don't sniff those because i don't want to die i tried hand sanitizer called fresh rainfall but it smells like a women's perfume department here's a really good rule of thumb any uh artificial smells that say they're gonna smell like something that is not capable of being recreated artificially will not smell like that they will smell like chemicals they will they are gonna try and chemically recreate the idea of what you're you think that thing smells like and it will never smell like that thing the real smell heads know howdy chat welcome in goopster campfire smoke oh yeah i love campfire smoke Oh, uh, I guess, like, another good one to mention is, like, anything pumpkin or, like, fall smells are really nice. That's just because I used to live, like, in, uh, more, I don't know. We had, like, pumpkin patches and stuff around fall, so, like, I, I like fall smells. That's, I think, I would categorize campfire as a, f like, late summer fall smell, so that one counts for me. I'm gonna hide all these so that I can actually see the sketch. Vanilla scents get a bit overwhelmingly sweet to me, but it's nice in small doses. I agree. What about the smell of wood? Oh, I love the smell of wood. 
Does Pluto have a smell too? So Pluto is the one that doesn't smell very good, but it's okay because he doesn't like to be cuddled the same way that Harbor likes to be cuddled. So in a sense, it's like actually good that he doesn't smell very good because it means that I respect his space in the way that he wants to be respected. I can pet him, like that's totally fine. He doesn't have, like he's not dirty, right? Like if you pet him your hands don't smell bad, but if you like go to sniff his head when you like cuddle him like I do with Harbor, he just smells kind of like, I don't know, he just kind of smells bad. He's kind of stinky. <laughs> he's, he, it's not his fault. He has started to smell better though. When we first got him he genuinely smelled like poop. Uh, but he was also a dumpster cat, so it's not his fault. I forgive him. And we fed him, and we brush and clean him, and he's getting better. Um, cat stink. The smell of dry, dried lavender is good. I agree with that. <laughs> he respects his space because he's stinky. I like Play-Doh. I like the smell of Play-Doh, and I also like how Play-Doh tastes. I used to eat it as a kid. That's the other thing, right? Uh, I'm... I have a really strong sense of smell, and I also would eat a bunch of really weird shit when I was a kid. Like, I ate salt licks for animals, I ate rabbit food, I ate, I ate a butterfly a few times when I was a little kid until I realized they were living things, and then I got really sad because I didn't know. But I was like an infant when that happened, so like, I, I'm innocent. I mean, listen, it's colorful and it's moving. It's, you put that, you give, you give a baby with really good, re like, reflex and, like, the ability to sit completely still the ability to like run around outside, I, you're gonna have a baby that eats a few bugs. It's just how it is. You were like a cartoon baby. I was just, I was out there having an awesome time. Uh, it was not, it was like purely a nature euphoric based experience when I was a toddler. I was just allowed to run around. You're so cat goaded, please. Please, yeah. I probably, if I could have caught a bird, I probably would have ate a bird too, so that's fair. Like I said, I just didn't realize they were alive until I was like four or so, and I felt really bad. And then I loved butterflies, and I still do. I, but until then, I was just like, ooh, moving. I used to chew paper like gum. I also did that. I ate glue, like glue sticks. I ate glue from the glue sticks. I would eat the plastic of pencil sharpeners. I would eat couch foam. Um, I used to eat peanut shells, and you had butterflies in your stomach. That's cute. I would eat erasers, and then I would chew wooden pencils and, like, try to get wood chips off them to eat them. Um, I just know you would have loved to have been born in the Dungeon Mesh universe. The funny thing is, I'm a really picky eater. But I'm not a picky eater because I don't like food, it's actually the opposite. I'm a picky eater because I I really only like good food. And I didn't realize that until I was much older. So, so sorry chat, you, there may be some people in here that kill me. Um, I really don't like stuff that's bland. Like, I don't like mashed potatoes, I don't really like gravy, I don't, I don't like savory stuff if it's not like really, really flavorful savory. Um, I think most cheeses are actually kind of boring. I do like cheese, but I think I don't like, like, boring cheese. Oop. Sure. I don't like turkey. I think that turkey is, like, one of the most boring meats. Uh, I actually like octopus over turkey. Octopus and shrimp and lobster and crab. Um, ham is pretty okay. It's probably, like, the most tolerable, uh, land animal to eat. I love eating shampoo, shampoo and Pepto. Oh yeah, I'm a salt fan. I'm a salt head. I love, I love a salt. A, no, no, I love salt. <laughs> no, I like salt. I like salty foods. Um, that was what I was trying to say. Good God. Anyway, I, I like salt and I think that the reason that I don't like a lot of foods is because they just don't use enough salt. Yeah, <laughs> I love, oh, I was trying to say I love salt. Uh, this is, this is, <laughs> I love assault, Willow Four Leaf Woods, thank you, just that clip gets used and Willow, Willow is over party. It's so Jover. Anyway, I was gonna say, I, I really don't like a lot of American foods because of that, because I find that, like, either they rely too heavily on, like, uh, savory sweet, oh, okay, so here's another one. I don't, I don't like barbecue, 
but that's not exactly true. I don't like American barbecue. But, oh, Ko-Fi, do-do-do-do. Move so I can see you. Explosive Claws. Thank you, Explosive Claws. I'm a salt fiend, though. I put too much salt on a lot of things. No, same. I, I put salt on pretty much most. Salt or soy sauce? I love soy sauce. I love MSG. I love uh, garlic. I love sesame oil. My friends. My cholesterol levels are always normal. Kiwi, have you looked into maybe... You, have you ever considered that you might have pots? I'm going to tell you right now. Anyone in the chat that's like, I love to eat salt, and if I don't eat salt, I get cranky or sleepy or dizzy, and also I eat so much of it and my, my cholesterol levels are always fine, you should probably Google the symptoms to POTS, like, right now. Because I'm not kidding you, I just thought that I was weird and really liked salt for a bunch of, for, like, years. And it turns out, no, it is literally just a condition that you can have where your blood doesn't work I can't I can't exactly describe it. I'm not good, but I just talked to this about my talk to my doctor about this. And they're like, yeah, it's pots. And I was like, what the hell is pots? And it was actually not just my doctor, it was another friend of mine who had it. And then was like, oh yeah. Blood malfunction. It's basically that's what it is. I don't know, honestly. I've looked in the pots because friends have it. Who else poured a pile of salt into their hands and lick it off? I didn't do do just that. Oh yeah, that I have a I don't like talk about being disabled ever because I just don't I don't know. I get I don't want to say I get embarrassed, but like I don't like talking about myself and the things that I deal with because I want to give more platform to other people who probably are more well spoken. Uh, but yeah, I've had pots forever. I didn't know what it was called. I just thought I had special fainting disease or whatever. Um because, like, I had to quit a lot of stuff when I was a kid because I couldn't uh, get overheated or, like, stand on stage. So, couldn't be in theater, couldn't be in chorus, despite wanting to. Uh, and so, when I got older, and it was still a problem to the degree where, like, at work I would start getting woozy if I was, like, if I hadn't eaten recently. Uh, I was like, uh, maybe I should, like, look into this. And that's when my doctor was like, yeah, it's just pots. And I was like, oh, dope. Among other things. Like, there are other reasons, too. Um, what about sugar? I don't feel great when I spend a while without sugar. That's called, I think that's called hyperglycemia, which I also have. Like, it can also be diabetes. Um, there's like a bunch of things, right? Like, if you get low blood sugar, um, it can be the sign of a few different, like, basically... Hold on, I can draw like a little thing. Because I'm not a doctor, let me say right here. I'm not a doctor, I just had to talk to doctors a lot to get help. If you are a person that like starts to feel really, really crappy after you don't eat food for a while, there's a few things you might need to consider. One, you just might need to eat. Like it's very possible that what you think is like a tolerable amount of time to have not eaten food is not actually appropriate because I feel like American work culture and American school culture especially like don't, don't they don't prioritize people's health they kind of just tell you to shut up and deal with it and people can t internalize that and start to think that this is normal but then if you start eating and treating yourself more regularly you re realize you start to feel a lot better i i did this i started eating a lot more like regularly eating meals a day and i did start to feel a little better so that one got checked off but even so i was getting to the point where like i would get faint if i hadn't had salt there hadn't had salt or something with sodium. That's POTS. I, again, I can't fully explain it, but basically, like, you get really lightheaded and you get tired and you start to, like, get spots in front of your eyes if you don't have something with sodium. So then I started eating salt with most meals and I started feeling better. Uh, and then finally, I had this thing where if I didn't eat, like, every two or three hours, it could be small, it could be something tiny, if I wasn't able to eat, like, something every two or three hours, I would start getting, like, really angry. Um, and, you know, my little sister had this, too. We always joked that she was, like, hangry as a kid. But then it went from being angry to, like, I genuinely felt ill and, like, I was going to die. And, like, the whole world was, like, collapsing in on me. And then I ate something. I'd be like, oh, I'm fine, actually. It's, it's not that bad. It's not that deep. Um, that's hypoglycemia. Basically, like, low blood sugar. Um, and it's, like, way more common than people think it is, uh, but it can be caused by a lot of things. Uh, specifically with me, what happened was, uh, with, like, childhood neglect and stuff and, like, not great household, I didn't always have food available. Uh, so 
and not always available meant like some days I would just not eat anything at all or I'd eat like one really really big meal at the end of the day and that's not good for you um especially in the developmental stages of your life that's not healthy for you so like if you notice that this is happening or any of these things are happening go down the checklist of like trying to restructure your life so that you're taking care of yourself a little better but also don't be afraid to look into the individual like symptoms that you're experiencing because if you can prove that it's not just that you're not eating enough or eating well enough then you can single out all of the other things does anyone else get hyper emotional when they're sick oh yeah i mean i know i've known people who are like that it's kind of like cats Cats get, cats get hostile when they're sick because they're going on defense mode. I think it's an animal thing. I can get rid of this now too. I, uh, back to this. Off topic, but did anyone spread glue on their hands and peel off their skin? Oh, I did do that when I was in school too. Anyway, sorry, my little health rant's over. And like I said, my, my disclaimer again is that I'm not a doctor. I just had to go to and talk to doctors a whole lot. So I I want to save people any of the aches and pains of wondering like, oh, well, I ha I am in pain and tired all the time, but I guess this is just how it has to be. When it's like, no, no, like, please try to actually understand yourself as a human being and as an animal, because it doesn't have to suck. Life can be, life can be beautiful. You just have to take care of yourself and take care of the soft animal of your body. First time I read about POTS was in a social media post that only used the abbreviation. I remember being confused at first because there's this one person who creates characters for Mu Jen who uses the same abbreviation. In this case, the, the abbreviation stands for Phantom of the Server. Oh, that's kind of funny. <laughs> oh yeah, some people do faint more easily than others. Where did I come in to have someone talk about the exact symptoms I have if I don't eat on time? Yes, please look up hypoglycemia or like low blood sugar symptoms. Please, like I said, I want everyone to take care of themselves if they can. And it would be my dream that everyone can get the care that they need and have healthy long lives, if that's possible. Uh, I don't want to do the windows. I don't want to do structural drawing, even though I sketched it for myself to do. And it'll look good when I'm done. Wah. That's okay. Just have to figure out how to... Take care of yourselves, love in the world forever, okay? Real. Does anyone else have a tied tongue? Like, get tongue-tied if you talk too fast? I love all of you. The vibes here are immaculate. Thank you. I try to. I try to keep it that way. Uh, I should probably start here. Oh yeah, that actually already looks better. Okay. I just need to move over the inside of the window a little bit. And then... I was wondering why I just didn't look thick enough, and it was because it it's truly was not. Oh, um, if they're here, if the person's here, though this is not a bad thing, I saw someone on... Well, okay, actually, I won't even specify which it was. Uh, I read the like is comment theories that people post, and I really like to see them because they range from, like, genuinely interesting, like, I hadn't considered how what I had written would be perceived that way, but they're really neat, like, interpretations of the work so far, um, to, like, you know, kind of funny. But not like I'm laughing at funny, just like endeared. Like I'm like, oh, that's I I can't I didn't expect that to be what your takeaway was, but it I could actually see where you're coming from. It's just a little silly from my point of view. Um, yeah, there are moats here. Um, but like I was reading Leka's theories today, and there was one that was like really really good that I was like, oh, I didn't even think that this could be like something that people would expect. It wasn't it wasn't true, but I hope that that person builds on their theory because I want to see if I want to see one if they rectify it. Oh my god, why is this doing this? Why are you closing? Hello? Oh, my tablet must be over my like escape button or something. Anyway, um, I read one on Twitter that was actually really interesting. I know, that's actually, you, we might be talking about the same one. Um, 
I, I really like seeing what people have to say and like what their thoughts are so far. Because like I said, I have the story planned out already so I know where I'm going. Um, and it does tell me if I'm revealing too much too quickly, if people are able to like hit the mark super, super fast. But it also shows me like that I've built a story that's getting people- Harbor. Get off your dad's computer. You're so bad. It's fine. He could turn his computer off. I'm not using it. Um. Hmm. Except the ethernet- No! The ethernet cable's down there. Harbor. You have to get off. I'm sorry. You can sit on my lap. Do you want to be my lap buddy instead of Kuchibachi? Oh, 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 oh no. Sorry to everyone in the audience that can hear the rattling and rustling, but when you're trying to wrangle a cat around wires, it doesn't work. Whew. He's sitting. No one can see him, but he's here with me now. Kitty cat. Anyway, um... I like seeing I like seeing the theories because it helps me know I've created a successful story that gives room for people to kind of like play with their imagination a bit while also like knowing where I'm going without uh, having to worry about changing things up. I won't be the lost writers basically. Like a, in the most recent panel of the comic looks like she's suffering so much the expressions are so good. I'm glad you think so. There's been some really cute pages that I've sketched recently. Actually, um, sorry, I'm just gonna turn the music down a bit. This one song always gets so loud. Um, now that chapter two is coming to a close, I've been working on scripting chapter three. Um, and I've been writing some of the early Road Boy, like, interactions and, like, gags. And something about this, like, new chapter, I've just been, like, cooking. I don't know why. I'm worried about Mars later on in the comics. Um... I'm not going to say that you shouldn't be, but I am going to say that I'm not a cruel writer and I want to, everyone to know that no matter what scary stuff gets tackled in the comic, I will always do so as kindly as possible. I would never want to I would never want to make people hurt for no reason. I would never want to make people sad for no reason, but I do also think that like sadness and fear and pain are part of life, so I would not exclude them from my writing for the desire to spare people from those things either, if that makes sense. Um, but I'll always do so as gently as possible. <laughs> Sorry, Puppy Chan got caught in the ads. My ads have been incredibly fucked up. Have they? Like what? I saw someone ask you about why Mars is Digi, but you and like our are, are plants I and everyone went, it's because they're autistic, and I've accepted this as fact. I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying there's a few reasons, right? There's like a few in universe reasons, but like uh I'm not saying anything. It just gave me a black screen for 30 seconds? That's scary. You are not a cruel not, you are not cruel simply for a real realistic storyteller. Thank you. That's that's what I like to go for. Well, because there's a, like, sentiment and fandom specifically right now that really pisses me off. But, like, I try to redirect any anger I have about things that I don't agree with into being productive or, like, being creative. So it doesn't do any good for me to just shout people down and be like, no, no, nothing burger stories aren't actually good. What you want is a story that treats you kindly and treats you with respect. Because I've seen a lot of people lately be like, oh, I hate stories with tragic endings. I hate stories where sad things happen. I want just a cozy, nice story where nothing bad ever happens. And the examples of the story they bring up are like the Moomins or like Comet in Moomin Land or like Miyazaki's movies, and I'm just sitting here like, almost every single one of the media pieces that you've brought up handles death in a pretty front-facing way. It's just that it's sandwiched between like, small slice of life and like, you know, caring elements of the story. I think what people want is not a story where nothing bad happens, it's just that they want a story that doesn't like, wail them over the head with- oh my god, I'm getting drowned. Ah, I'm sorry! <laughs> I'm drinking. I have soda tonight, too, so that my throat doesn't, like, start to go bad. I can keep talking. Die, little queer kid! Die! Excuse me! I'm- <laughs> I'm 25! I'm not a child! I like media that has tragedy in it, but I don't like fanfics that have tragic endings. Well, okay, actually, and here's the thing. 
for fanfic, I would never go out of my way to read something that has a tragic ending because it's like if I want more of the media, I don't want I don't want something that would end tonally different than the original media itself ended. Like okay, there are some media that like they do have a tragic ending or there's literally no way that two characters could be together that wouldn't be tragic and that I don't mind. Like I think that that's interesting, right? On the other hand, like I don't I'm sorry, I don't really want to read like a tragic wump mob psycho fan fiction because mob psycho is like Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Sorry, <laughs> Super Peachy, I was confused. I was like, I am not a child. Willow should do video essays. I, I have written them. I just never recorded them because I've been scared of my voice being online. Uh, but I do like to, I write a lot of essays. I just don't publish them anywhere. I like tragic endings sometimes. If they're done well, they can really stick with you. So Honeycrud, that was what I was building up to, is that like, sometimes tragedy doesn't isn't necessary. Sometimes it doesn't have a place, and I think people just milk it because they like seeing people, they like feeling bad, and that's not a bad thing, right? Art is a means of catharsis for emotions that you can't let out outside of the artistic world. But on the other hand, I think that tragedy in actual stories, like not f fan works of a story that already exists, is really important because if not for fictional tragedy how do we learn to cope with things that we encounter in our real lives that leave us feeling less than stellar like there was um i've talked about it on stream before the the musical into the woods and it was the first time that i've ever um seen a musical or story or anything that made me like angry right after i finished it because I was like, that's so sad. Like, that ending is so sad. Why would they write that ending? But then I thought about it. And I, when I say I thought about it, I mean, like, years. Like, it took me years to return to Into the Woods, the Into the Woods musical. Um, and after I did, it's probably one of my most favorite musicals now. Because I realized after having sat on it for so long... I needed something that would tell me that, like, listen, not everything is going to end happily and not everything's going to wrap itself neatly up with a bow, but there are still things that you can take away even from tragedies, and you'll still have people beside you regardless of who you lose in the, on the way. It, it was, it's a good musical. I like to confront the entire spectrum of human emotions, but I think people are kind of sadder than ever, and that a lot of people in the state would naturally seek media that comforts and assures them. I get it. Exactly. So that's, see, exactly to what, okay, wait, Scorodite MC, I think is what that says. That's exactly to what you said. Whenever something frustrates me in people's reactions to things, like with talking about Has Been Hotel last night, I, I never want to get mad and be like, no, don't do that. I want to understand why they do it so that I can present an alternative action and take that action myself. Also, off topic again, but have you ever had such a bad art time that you give up on the art itself and you're depressed for the rest of the night? Yes. Rinsu, I, I promise you that that is actually like very common with art. And what I do when that happens is I kind of turn it into um, self-care or I do whatever I want night. Because art is an uh, avenue of like self-expression, right? So when it feels like I can't perform what is my favorite thing to do properly, it is really, like, defeating. Uh, so I go out of my way to take care of myself and take care of the other things that make me feel good uh, in its stead. Usually what I do is, like, I'll, like, make... I'll either get takeout or I'll, like, make one of my favorite dinners, and then I will just brainlessly, like, play whatever video game I want or watch a show that I like or a movie, and that does help. I don't want sad mob psycho fanfic. I want Suri fluff for a hundred thousand words. I want tragic and sad things. I like tragic and sad things, but I prefer when it's presented in a meaningful way and not just to be sad. Um, I agree. Also, I was going to say, with Siri Ray, actually, the thing that makes me kind of nuts is that I feel like Sirizawa and uh, Reagan actually have a lot of character development that's very... Like, it's right there. It almost feels like it kind of throws itself in your lap, because where the Reagan uh, comic ends... The Reagan spin-off comic actually focuses quite heavily on Tomei, which I liked. I thought it was a really funny means of like developing her character was to be like, here's the Reagan spin-off. It's about Tomei. And it, it is also about him. 
But I feel like it also leaves Reagan and Serizawa in a place where there's a lot of development that could happen both for them individually as people and like in between them as co-workers slash characters. The best fanfic that I see for Mob is fanfic that like has Reagan kind of like treat Serizawa more like an equal because Serizawa himself begins respecting himself as a person and not just like a subordinate of Reagan and like makes it clear like their their relationship is still like a boss and his and his like employee but like that it's it's like the play version of that like they're both aware of the fact that Reagan doesn't actually have powers that he can't really do this without Serizawa there but Serizawa chooses and enjoys to be there because of what being with Reagan offers him and I think that that's like a dynamic that um people just don't explore like they kind of just go they just either just like lean into the oh Serizawa is anxious and he can't do anything for himself and it's like well that's not very satisfying to watch because anxiety doesn't go away sure but your means of dealing with it and like integrating back into society they grow like you get better at it and that's what I'd want to see I would never want to see like you know fan fiction is meant to extend off of the the canon off the meta um but like I wouldn't want to just see more of the character becoming static and not growing beyond how they end. I want to see them grow past that. Serena <laughs> makes them mentally ill. They could they could make each other so much better people. And I really want to see Serizawa and Regan learn to love each other in healthy ways. I agree. Oh, also with Suri Rays, I hate uh, the fandomification of the way that they act, and I think that. Uh, I think that if you're going to write two 20-year-old men, neither of them who have had a relationship before the story begins, starting a relationship with each other, they need to be awkward. They need to be lame. They are not going to be kissing like Titanic style, like rose petals flying. They are going to be really embarrassing about it. And I think that that's okay. And that's refreshing. And the patience and gentleness that comes from a relationship between two people that are really inexperienced and kind of like fumbling with each other is so much more satisfying to me than watching or reading something that's just like, I don't know, I, I essentially just like, I'm trying to think of a nice word for this. Um, well, this doesn't feel real. That's what I'll leave it at. I don't think anyone does that too criminally, but I have come across a few fanfic that I read and I just put them down right away because I'm like, this isn't how they would act. Like, this is barely even how real people act, but they certainly wouldn't act this way. <laughs> no one gets serious, like people who are social awkward, socially awkward and almost in their 20s, me. I've been following you on Tumblr for a while and I enjoy your artwork so, so much. Very happy to have caught a stream and I'm loving this conversation. Thank you, Moss Mouth. I do I don't talk about shipping a lot and I know I know on Tumblr I say I am a shipping hater and it's not it's not true I know I I've said it before I'm not a hater of shipping but I am very like like if you're gonna do it do it full pussy put your whole heart into it like I love these characters so I want to see other people that love these characters so when I see people that just treat it like it's like oh <laughs> I guess these are my new Blurbos. I haven't actually seen or watched or read the thing, but I am going to put them in little outfits and make them kiss. I'm like, no, I want to talk to other people that love this thing. Why are you here? Go make OCs. It's fine. Like you can do that. Just do, don't do it here. It's a moral duty to hate shipping in public and enjoy it in private. <laughs> Siri or just autistic for autistic and then I love it. I agree. Real. Enjoy a character and love their character depth. <sighs> Every single day I carry, I'm like Atlas carrying the world on my back because I am an Angel Devil fan and I actually like Angel Devil outside of Aki Angel and it's literally why I stopped drawing Aki Angel because I couldn't stand the way that people who ship him with Aki characterize him because it drives me crazy because he's such a good character. I was wondering, oh, oh sorry, just wondering, very sorry to interrupt, do you have any tips for someone who would like to start streaming but is very scared? Like in the, I have no idea what you even need to start. Okay, sure, I can definitely do that. I am flipping over to this just so I can make like a little checklist for screenshot, screenshotting purposes. Um, for streaming, first and foremost, you're going to need a streaming program. And streaming programs, a lot of them are free. The one that I personally use is free. I use OBS. Basically what OBS does is it takes a recording of your stream, or sorry, a recording of what's happening on your computer screen, and it mixes it with the voice 
your desktop audio, anything else you want in it, like my little PNG tuber is going to be there too. I feel all of this, like, sounds like you do not, in fact, enjoy shipping for the simple fact that you enjoy multifaceted characters and how they inter interact with each other. Yeah, 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 exactly. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So, OBS, you're going to need your program. The second thing you're going to need is, and this is not as much as a necessity depending on how important audio quality is to you, but I will tell you that people will stop watching if your audio quality is like too crunchy. Um, you will need a mic um, or just some sort of device that captures audio quality. Um, go with what is most accessible to you. What I do for audio, I have a USB mic. So what I personally use is I use a USB road it's like this mic i got it for like 75 dollars for my birthday one one year um and this is what i've been using to stream back since i started streaming in like 2019 2020 um and it served me really well forest's audio setup is a little more like professional than mine he got it for cheaper but that's because a lot of the stuff he built himself however I would say that for me, because I'm not as tech savvy as he is, getting the USB mic works perfectly fine. I would recommend a mic TM if you get one. An okay one will run for 25 to 50 and a decent one will run for 50 to 80. That is true. Also look for sales. Um, there's always like Cyber Monday, Black Friday sales. If you don't want to wait that long though and you want to start soon, then yeah, that, that, that price range is solid. Um, three, just figure out like, what you're going to stream because I think that one thing that uh, a lot of people get like trapped in is that they will want to start streaming they'll stream a game but then when they're done that game they don't know what to do after that so they kind of just peter out or alternatively they'll only stream one game like Genshin Impact or Call of Duty I can't really think of any games that would be able to stream long enough and that's not bad but what will help you is to find a small pocket or style of games you enjoy playing. Um, for example, I do art, obviously, but then Forest plays a lot of like story-based, narrative-based, RPG, roguelikes, that kind of thing. Um, and of course we play Lethal all together as a group, but typically speaking, he doesn't play games like that. Or like Splatoon, like I know that some people are like specifically Splatoon streamers and Pokemon streamers, and that works too. You never have to nail down your niche right away, but I will tell you if you shift around what you play too much, people that might watch you for one thing don't want to stick around for another thing, and you will be stuck there wondering why people are not showing up for something that you enjoy playing, but maybe they don't enjoy watching. Um, and then for... I mean, I guess that's really all you actually need to set to, to stream, because I don't have much more than that personally. I was going to say you could use a PNG tuber. Having any kind of moving visual is nice. Uh, it could be a VTuber, a PNG tuber, you could have a 3D model. You could just use your face, Pen plenty of people still do that. Um, the reason I use a little PNG tuber personally is because I'm an artist, so I feel like it's a good way to like show off my art. Um, <laughs> I'd like oxygen not included, to be honest. What? Do you mean in the Rode microphone? Is that the symbol? No, it's not the symbol for oxygen. I'm not a chemist, but I do feel like I know that at least. Gaming's fun, but it's fun to explore variety too. I'd say if you bring a friend along, it helps less the anxiety. That is true. Some people do too, people. All of these how to stream guides often say audio quality is more important than video and you should get a good mic, but if you have compelling stream, a majority of people don't care if you're- Yeah, no, it's not about professional. It's about, um, honestly, the two things I would pay attention to with your mic is Make sure your mic isn't overpowering the sound of whatever you're streaming, and make sure that when you hit those like um, P, T, and like harsher noises, it's not spiking or popping in a way that would um, bother your like listeners' ears. I will say I have kind of like over the many years of recording my voice online, I've trained myself to uh, not un pronounce those like really really hard. Oh, you wound up getting video tuber. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, goodness. Uh, video tuber. That's what I use for my PNG tuber. And uh, Miramo sent Miramo sent it in the chat. But hold on, I want to make sure I'm spelling it right. Via vid, via do tube. I actually don't know how to say it. I've been saying video tube, but that's, that's probably not right. Um. This is how I get my PNG tuber to work. It is a program made by another trans person and it is super duper easy to work. Uh, so if you want to have a little PNG tuber, all you need is four transparent drawings and video tuber. And 
it'll do all that for you in the background. Your mic doesn't have to be good as long as it's listenable. Yes, that is exactly. And actually, sometimes I feel like people who fiddle around with professional mics too much wind up making their mics, like, not pleasant to listen to. Um, but that's a subject for another day. All that said, I hope that helps, and I'm always happy to hear people are looking into streaming. Um, it's the same as I'm always happy to hear- oh, that's way too big. I'm always happy to hear people are uh, getting into art because I feel like there can never be enough artists in the world and creatives and I don't know, the more the merrier for me. I'd love to see what people make and what they do with their time. Of course, thank you for asking too. It's, I'm always happy to give the advice I can. I wouldn't be here where I am if, I, if people hadn't helped me, of course. My computer keeps crashing with Twitch opening, so I have to go for the night. Hopefully everything goes well. I'm sorry, Serene Sparks. Thank you for coming while you could. I'm not sure I want to stream because I have people in my house who would disrupt me. Yes, I... That was actually also part of the reason that I stopped streaming for a little bit, was just, like, I wasn't confident that I would be able to stream consistently or, like, at a time I wanted because the job that I had was so... Like, it didn't give me the time to do that. Um, I would have nights where, like, I was supposed to only work up until 6 o'clock, and then I would wind up being there until 10. So, while I was working at Starbucks, it just wasn't really feasible for me, because I would not be able to keep a schedule. And that's, that's a huge audience killer, is if you can't be consistent, or if you at least can't, like, make announcements for when you're not going to be, people get really frustrated. They're that way with comics too though, like if you if you don't make clear enough announcements that your comic's going to be like on hiatus or that you're taking a pause for say like Palestine, people can get really snippy and then when you like let them know they'll be like oh I'm so sorry but then you know you still had to deal with the tone to begin with. Um, so I've just learned that uh, more communication the better but if you're worried about consistency it's better to try and focus on things that allow you to be a little more like uh, inconsistent. Speaking of comics, yes. Oh, you were a Starbucks barista. I remember being a barista there. It sucked out my soul every day. I was a Starbucks barista for two and a half years, and it was probably my best paying job. And it was also the job that genuinely made me like go on full mental breakdowns multiple times uh, while working there. And I will probably never... I loved being a barista, but I will never go back to Starbucks. Uh, for many reasons, obviously, Palestine being a huge one, but like, uh, just terrible, terrible treatment of their employees. The food's not that good, you can get it much better somewhere else for much cheaper, and also just, it wasn't worth the pain. Like, $15 an hour is good, but it is not worth, like, having to be available at all times. Like, that was the thing, right, is that they would say, oh, okay, so your work days are Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. What if we scheduled you for Friday, Saturday, Sunday without telling you also you're working, like, 30 hours over those three days? Would like to be a barista, absolutely not for Starbucks. No, please, check out any of your local cafes. Many local cafes are usually hiring, and if they're, like, if they're not they might be later so if you let them know that you're looking for a job and you're interested in being a barista and leave your contact info it's possible they might like come back and try to grab you oh yeah i had very cl kind clientele but the workload was terrible hours were terrible the drama was terrible and i ended up having to let so many customers down because despite the inclusivity claim virtually nothing was halal nothing was allergy safe very true very very true No, that was actually part of our training, is that, like, Starbucks was like, oh, well, we can tell customers when things will have allergens in them, but their version of telling customers when things had allergens in them was just to say, well, you probably can't eat anything because it probably all has allergens in it. And I'm like, how is that in any way helpful or informative to this person? You've just, you've essentially just said that to this customer, sorry, you can't eat here because we don't know what's safe. Huh? Or, like, of course, the Russian roulette of, like, well, this might have your allergen in it. You could find out. Reheating the Starbucks food in the little ovens was very kindy, in my opinion. That's funny. Sorry. The the little... The, uh, the ovens were funny. I When it got really cold and they wouldn't run the heat, I used to, like, just open the ovens and stand in front of them. And that was... I felt... 
It I, it made me feel something. I don't know what it was. My favorite- I did like Bar, personally. I think Bar was my favorite part, but I hated uh, Bar on Rush, like when we were getting a bunch of customers. But like bar, Night Bar, like when everyone's like get cleaning up and you only get like a few drinks every so often, that's my favorite part of the job, personally. Find out and risk an allergy reaction and give us your money for it. Real. Best place I've ever worked was Dairy Queen. Worst was Starbucks. Starbucks has no respect for your boundaries. It doesn't. Tim Hortons, anyone? I had an ex that worked at Tim Hortons. I actually encouraged them to get that job. Um, they didn't They didn't work there very long, though. They, they quit after a week. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if Tim Hortons is, is good or not. I've heard the food's good. My friend is allergic to cinnamon, and so we went to Starbucks for the first time when we were 15 and 16. They had an allergic reaction because the barista didn't tell them that a lot of the foods were cross-contaminated. Yeah, there's not a lot of good... I'm gonna be so honest, they do not properly staff Starbucks at all, and part of the reason why so many of the foods get cross-contaminated is because they just straight up don't have time to clean stuff. Like, you will be on the same, like, position for two and a half hours just to be, like, just to realize your shift ended like a half hour ago and you are still working because they don't have your replacement to come in yet and your boss will kind of look at you as like with sad dog eyes because well and i say boss but like the the shift managers very often are not responsible for like someone not coming into their shift they're just they're kind of just in there with you next to you sorry they're in there next to you in it that's what i was trying to say Bro, one time my friend had an allergic reaction at Starbucks because of how much steamed milk was in the air. It's like a miasma. Milk fog. Alright, I actually think that the lines are on their way to getting done. Actually, actually, what I can do now is I can merge some of these down so I can paint bucket some stuff, which will be lovely. Da -da -da. Yes, nice. And yes. Reason for putting that line there is so that um, everything is basically like a closed circuit. And it makes it so that I can paint bucket some of this stuff in, which will be very helpful. There we go. I just realized I didn't draw his chest. I have to do that. Summon boyfriend. Actually, guys, I'm so sorry. My boyfriend's at a parent-teacher meeting tonight with our kid, he, so he won't be able to come in for a bit. Although he might be watching on his phone, I don't know. He should be at the parent-teacher meeting paying attention, but I can't speak for what he does because I don't know if it's boring or not. Sorry, Super Peachy, I just read your message and, like, failed summon spell. I'm sorry. He'll be back. Our, our kid basically just goes to like a school where you have to do volunteer work, both parent and parents and kids. Um, so he's going in to like hear about that and like catch up on some stuff that he missed, uh, you know, in the years of not being a parent. <laughs> Activates forest teleport spell. I wish I had a forest teleport spell. I would use it. I would probably a little bit abuse it because anytime I got lonely, I would just teleport him. All right, so it looks like this part of the wings is darker. So what I'll do... Also, uh, someone on stream uh, Tuesday pointed out that Yume Tuki is actually pronounced Yume Nikki because Tu is uh, ni, ni in Japanese, and I like completely failed and probably disappointed my Japanese teacher in spirit. However, um, I was also, while listening to the music, I've decided I probably should just actually play Yume Nikki, or the second Yume Nikki. I made such a good joke on Far Stream yesterday and had to leave before I got a reaction. Oh, I'm sorry. I have to do volunteer work, both parent and kid. It's, um, it's basically because it's like, how do I explain it? So, our kid goes to a charter school. What it is, is it's like a it's like a public school that you can go to for free 
I guess it's not a public school. It's a school you go to for free, so it's not like a private school where you have to pay to get in, but it's supposed to be like a better school than some of the public schools, and the way that they keep it running is that you, like, they run off donations and community service, I think? I don't fully understand how this stuff works because I'm not in education, but that's how it was explained to me. Um, so in order for our kid to stay in the school, both of them have to do volunteer work to help keep the, keep their like entry in the school, I guess. You also have to test in, that's the other part of it too. I was gonna say, I've always heard it as Yume Tuki, but it makes sense because like two, it's like each Nissan, like Ni is two, so it's pronounced as Yume Nikki as well. Welcome in, Asteri. Strange school to me, to be honest. I, like, it is a little strange. It, like, it does make sense how it would function. Like, if you want a better education that, like, this, you, they can compile better resources if, you know, you help feed into those resources. It's just, like, I don't know. I don't, I didn't expect to have a kid at 25, so I am a bit of a stranger to some of this stuff. Are you drawing, drawing Neuvern? I am. It's for a commission. Um, I'm drawing Neuvern and a Neuvern trainer. Although I don't like how these wings look, so I'm actually going to not fully erase them. I'm just going to erase this portion here and come back to this later. So I don't think it was wrong, but it just wasn't looking, it wasn't scratching my brain the way I wanted it to. Now where is your, there's your neck fluff. I was put into the gifted school in middle school had this that had this policy that we will not give you any mental or physical accommodations, so I was unable to succeed there. I'm sorry. Oh, see you, geez, I'm Gerald. Thank you for coming. I'm sorry that you have to leave. Your school ever says that they refuse to accommodate you, by the way. Take them to court. Well, I I will if I am ever in school again, I will do that, but I am not, as I am 25 but that is solid advice. I mean, I've considered going back to college, but that's expensive. And now I don't think that I have... Now that most of my time goes into writing and having taking care of a kid, I probably won't have that chance ever. But, you know, it's a dream. It's still there. I don't know if I've ever talked about my college experience, actually. Um, I wanted to go for... Uh, sequential arts and comics and uh, storyboarding and to spare some of the gritty details my family basically didn't think that art was a real job for a very long time um, but because the 3d arts the 3d modeling and animation degree that I did wind up getting was also like a computer science degree um, they were like okay if I went for that but I couldn't do anything else uh, art related so I wound up going for 3D modeling and animation and special effects, uh, but I really, really hated it, and I was quite unhappy at school. Uh, I did did graduate, like I finished it out, but because of that, a lot of my family was confused afterwards, like why I wasn't doing something in my field. Uh, so I eventually got to explain, like, I never really wanted to go for that anyway. I did it because it was the only way I could get art schooling. And they were like, wait, why didn't you just go for art? And I had to be like, well, they didn't, my family didn't think that was a job. They didn't think it was real. And I had, like, it did cause a little controversy tra controversy in my family. And it was nice to have people be supportive of me, like, wondering why my parents wouldn't let me, especially since I had made it in many places. Um, or, like, I had been working on portfolios to go places and been told by many of my teachers that I shouldn't have any trouble getting in. Sorry. So tell us about college. Okay, good, good. I was making sure I wasn't just waffling on. Um, all that said, I think that the the information I got from going to college where I did was inexpensive. Like I I learned things that I wouldn't have learned if I hadn't gone there. Obviously, that's what school is. But I do someday wish that I could go for sequential arts, like I had originally wanted and like I had originally prepared my portfolio for. 
Um, because I think that, like, even while being self-taught in terms of, like, illustration and comics, there's some things that really are, like, you can only gain them from having a critique experience or a teacher who's willing to, like, walk you through things. I actually say this a bunch. I feel like I'm at the stage of being an artist where I wish I had a mentor, where I wish I had, like, someone that I could uh, go to for advice, because I only really have other Twitter artists and like Tumblr artists online who are all phenomenal peers that I really admire and look up to. But it's not the same as having someone that's already on the end of the road that like is looking back and is like, oh, hey, dodge that here, or do this here. And sometimes I, I do wish that I had that like an older person that I could look to and be like, so where do I go? My mom and dad both have degrees in photography, so it's weird to think about it. Yeah, it is weird for them to think about that. My Actually, that's similar to me. My mom has an art therapy degree, and I think because she didn't really like art therapy, she didn't stick with it. But like because of that, she's now settled herself into the camp of, well, art's not a real job anyway. And it's like, the, the, you, you went through the door and then closed it behind you so no one could follow you through. That's kind of terrible, isn't it? Um, on the other hand, that is why I'm always so, like, vocally supportive of people going into their arts and into their passions, because, like, you know, it took me so long to finally be able to be able to do mine, but I don't regret it at all, actually. I'm very, I'm much happier for it. Um, so I just want people, like, I want them to save time and just have the ability to be happy faster and figure, th figure their shit out faster. Faster than me, at least. It's super bizarre. Just because something doesn't work for you doesn't mean it doesn't work at all. No, but you would be surprised by how many people feel that way. Like, if they try something and it doesn't work for them, whether because they just genuinely don't succeed at it or because they don't like it, there are people that take that belief with them for the rest of their life and, and then they think that, that it just doesn't work for anyone because it didn't work for them. It's interesting. Um... Now I have to figure out what I want to color this cup, actually. Actually. The other thing I was thinking, too, originally in this drawing I had made the cushion black, but there is already so much black in the piece already. I kind of wonder if I could make the cushion red, kind of like a red velvet uh, couch. I just think that would be kind of neat. Has a nice texture to it, then. Oh, actually, teacups usually have, like, this. They're, like, usually darker on the top. Oh, I kind of like that it looks like a pokeball. Alright, yeah, and then I'm gonna grab the cushions here. The Bob's taking over my mind, like a Bob haircut. Oh, Spongebob! I love Spongebob. Red would be an awesome contrast color too. I agree with that, with how like blue the rest of the piece is and the fact that um, Neuvern and the trainer take up so much uh, green space in it. I think that would look, I think that would look good actually. I'm gonna grab these. It's not gonna be like a bright blazing red obviously because the rest of the piece is so blue, um, but it's gonna be the same red that makes up Neuvern's uh, details. It actually filled in pretty nice, although I missed the rim in the front there. And then I should probably make a darker red value for like shadowed areas. Because this front part of the cushion is facing away from the light, so it's going to be like a little darker. I just can't get like too dark, so otherwise we're getting... Otherwise the piece is going to just be like mostly black values and that'll make it hard to see. And there we go. Oh, but that looks fine. That looks perfectly fine. I always love your color palettes, Will. Thank you! I'm not yet in college due to being held back repeatedly due to undiagnosed learning disorders, but it's okay because if I wasn't held back, I wouldn't have met some of the most amazing people in my life. That's a really good way of thinking about it. That's sweet. Um, I bet I could do the outside colors, because that one window is a closed circuit, so... Very nice, I can. Very, very nice.
It is all coming together. Probably won't finish this piece tonight, but I might try to do this one Oop, wrong way. Um, fun fact, when you're drawing Storm, I don't know why this is. I couldn't tell you what it is. When you're drawing a stormy sky, and you want to have a background gradient, you go dark up to light. But when you ha want to have a clear sky, or a sky that do doesn't have like a uh, kind of haze or snowfall or clouds or rain or anything, you go dark down to light. Don't know why. I really couldn't tell you what it is that does that. If I had to guess like scientific reason why, it's because when it's raining, the water and like precipitation is like accumulated up here and it's falling down to earth. So this white section up here is actually like kind of clouds or haze. Whereas when it's bright, the light is bouncing off the ground uh, and it creates like a gradient that goes up to the bluer areas of the sky, which is like, you know, the reflected color of our atmosphere. Um, but for I could, again, I couldn't I couldn't fully explain why this reads as storm and this reads as clear day. So a lot of art is just science. It's just understanding why um, things are read certain ways. But it's like um, I don't know. I like to say I have an artist's understanding of all sciences, where it's not very perfect understandings, but it's enough that I can learn how to draw better, and that's all I really want anyway. <laughs> Thank you. I just, uh, to Prismo the Wishman that said I'm wise, I, um, I think I just, I try to be cur a little bit curious about everything because that that's what being an artist is, right? You have to always want to know enough about something so that you might capture it. Um, so I don't know. I never want to think of myself as someone that's smart because that's the second I stop thinking I have new things to learn. And uh, I never, there's never not new things to learn. It's also why sometimes I feel really weird giving art advice to people because I just like, you know, I can only share so much of what I know, but I don't know everything either. So giving advice feels almost like wrong. Like I feel like someone else should be telling me what to do, but I can explain what I know how to do at the very least. I think all artists should take basic, basic science classes. Yeah, actually, that's that's something I had to do, um, especially because my degree was so like computer based. We had to learn how to recreate uh, physics and uh, different types of like atmosphere, and so we had to take uh, physics classes. We had to take some basic like uh, space science class. It was pretty cool. And yes, I love anatomy. Late to the combo because I was drawing, but I'm going through a process of name changes. Sorry, I want to make sure I read that. It's a long process, but I'm genuinely excited to go to college. That's awesome. Do you know any 3D programs? Uh, I used Maya. Primar primarily, we modeled with Maya. Uh, our teachers actually really actively hated Blender, which is funny because most of the 3D modelers that I know personally online now that like 3D modeling use Blender. Which, you know, I don't know if that says anything about the type of program I was in. Um, but no, we all used Maya, and Maya was genuinely, like, insanity-inducing. And sometimes I still actually have nightmares about Maya's um, desktop layout and, like, the UI of it. And I'm just in Maya and modeling. It's called Autodesk Maya. Um, <laughs> do you remember making 3D things in Blender? <laughs> That's goofy. I remember you posting about that? Yes. I, I do still have, I do sometimes still have cube nightmares. Um, the, the other thing is in Maya, the desktop space that you work on, it's either just like a gray background with a grid pattern on it that looks like this. And then your little, uh, whatever you're modeling is like a gray cube or cylinder in the center. Or alternatively, it's like this very uncanny bright blue sky background it's meant to create like mimic real light so you can see how your object looks uh when it's lit and it just looks like actually no it does look like this and then your object is just like a gray thing in the middle of it and you like can whiz around it on all angles it's awful it's so horrible and like uncanny feeling but i also just don't like 3d i don't know to me it really fed into uh 
my dissociation and de depersonalization, so I do not have fond memories of it. That scares me. I know it does. It is it is genuinely like really uncomfortable for me to use. Um, I just don't think that. I said it uh, to Forrest. I think that because we were modeling such hyper real objects, the ability to make something that looks like I could find it sitting on my, like I, I one project that I did, I had to model a frying pan that I had, and it got the model was so close to reality that most people could not tell the difference between the model of the frying pan I made and the real frying pan. And it started to kind of break me a little bit to realize that you could just make a 3D model of something. Okay, I'm hydrating. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'll drink. I'll dink. I'm the dinker. But yeah, I just, I think that started uh, messing with my head. The idea that like, you could so perfectly capture the real world version of something that, uh, you almost couldn't tell what was real and what wasn't real. Not good for me. Not good for my men my mental state. Also, I would think that if this was liquid in here, it would, like, be reflective. But this looks really bright, so I may have to revisit this later. It's fine for now, though. Sorry because this isn't on the current subject all at all, but what have you... But have you seen or heard of Misaka, Misaki Yuasa's work? He did... Oh! Devil Don't Cry Baby. I know him and I just watched a YouTube video on him, like a YouTube video essay on him, like, I want to say a year ago. I do need to still watch Devil Man, um, Devil Man Crybaby, but I, so I don't know anything yet, but I want to, if that makes sense. Gave us the Morpho books for art reference, but it doesn't help with muscles and how they move in different poses. Um, if that's the case, hold on. Because I also use the Morpho books, but I think the Morpho books don't tell you enough about action and movement. And the other thing is, nothing really replaces a live model for me. Um, I give the Morpho books out as my first instance of helping people learn how to draw body proportions and fat. There are also muscle-specific books, but... Um, hold on. Sorry, I'm getting a picture of them so I can pull them up so you... I don't... So I can give you a visual associated with um, the name too. There you go. These guys, the taco art books. Um, I... Okay, let's make that bigger. They do come in English, uh, so you can get translated. I have two of them. And these are figure books that I use, um, honestly, every so often when I get stiff with my art, I'll just whip these out and I'll draw some stuff from it. Um, I don't know, it's just a really good way to learn uh, action poses after you've gotten some basic figure structure. I don't know if your comms will ever open again, but what's the price range of your phone wallpaper for non-Pokemon? I actually don't do phone wallpapers for uh, anything but Pokemon. I'll be quite honest, I haven't done commissions for anything other than Pokemon for a while because I just haven't really wanted to. Um, I want that book, but it's $40. Is it? I got- I thought I got mine for like 12. My friend, I don't know if it is- if it's $40 now, I apologize. I would never recommend something that would wallet break you that badly. Well, it's- it's 30, so I- so I see. Oh my goodness, why was the list price 75? It seems like the price jumps all over the place, so I understand, but yes. I have- I have these and I got them for pretty cheap. I think I must have got them during a sale day or something. Um, what's the name of the book? It's Taco Art Books. That's, you could look up Taco Art Books or Taco Anatomy Books and they should come up. Um, I've been wait been waiting for non-Pokemon commissions because I don't have any Pokesonas, despite Pokemon being my spin. I, at some point I'll open them. I do think I'm going to do furry name badges for the next round of commissions, just because I liked doing very detailed backgrounds for this round, but I think I need something softer to launch myself back into taking new commissions again. Um, and so I would do kind of the style of the furry name badge that I had done before. Um, that said, it's not a no, like I might at some point again do phone backgrounds for something other than Pokemon, but because Pokemon is so like familiar and pleasant for me to draw, I just want 
Like, I never want commissions to not be fun for me, because that's the way that I burn myself out instantly, so I try to only take stuff that I actively enjoy drawing, while also knowing that, like, it's gonna be something that the person that I'm doing it for likes, if that makes sense. Actually, speaking of enjoying art, I think I've gotten this to a point where I can be good for how much I've gotten done tonight. <laughs> Although I meant color... Actually, no, that's good, that's good. Um, what I'm doing after this is I just wanted to draw some Leica. Leica cooldowns slash just general Leica. Sorry if you guys heard my computer shift in the background. Ah, okay, I hear you. There we go. I hope I'm able to commission you someday. Will I love your art? Thank you. How much do your comms usually cost? Um, a general pricing structure that I use is that I pay myself anywhere from 80 to 100 a day. And these big phone... When I was working more efficiently, the phone uh, background pieces used to take me three days to finish. Um, so these would be like 200 to 250, um, whereas like a single character full color bust would be like $80, and then for the Pokemon ones with like a partner they would be anywhere from 90 to 100. Um, but I need to time myself again to see if that price structure is still accurate, because I have been drawing more detailed pieces lately. Um, so I would say if you have anywhere over $150, you can commission me and that should be fine. And you should be able to afford most of the things that I do. I should draw the Leica in different clothing styles. I actually was going to do that for Yue, but for Leica I was going to do hairstyles for tonight. Um, also, I don't remember. Oh, my phone's here. I've been wanting to watch chat and I couldn't see it. Um, but yeah. Uh, rule of thumb is if, uh... If you have under fifty dollars set aside, you should be able to afford a commission from me. If you don't have that set aside, I would actually ask you please commission another artist. I don't have any shortage of people that are asking for commissions, and I know that people really like my art and I appreciate that. But there are other artists out there that also need commissions that have like prices that are different from mine. The reason I price them this way is because it's how much time it takes me, and also like I have a kid, so I've got bills to pay. Um, but I also understand that that's not available for everyone, so I, like, I'm not upset by that, I just want to be realistic and upfront about it, too. Ah, uh, posture check. Hold on. Ugh. Sorry, I gotta put it... Gotta put Coochie Patchy in my lap, because I let him fall to the ground. Welcome in, Larste. One of my life goals is to gift my nep nephew a commission from you. You're such a huge commission or inspiration for him. Wait, that's so sweet! Thank you! My school hosts an art competition program every year. One of the categories is this year's AI art. Ooh. Ooh. That's... that's bleak. I'll draw sweet Leica to raise our spirits. Basically, I just wanted to capture... Leica has short hair, but I want to try and style her hair in different ways despite it. Um... Because I have her hair a few different ways. Like, she's got her default style. How do you recommend pricing art? I have never taken comms before and I was thinking about doing clean flat... I was thinking about doing clean flat colored things as headshot, half, and full for 15, 20, and 25, but I don't know if that's too much. Um, what I would say, name badges? Name badges are the, actually the one that I need to time, um, because I need to see how long they were taking me, because the way I priced them was not accurate. I was pricing them at 50, and it was taking me like a day and a half to finish them, which just was not appropriate, like, for how much I was putting into it. Um, also, the song that's playing right now, it is the Yume Tuki soundtrack. I can link it real quick. Um, but yes, name badges were going to be the thing that I did, uh, but they were taking me much longer than I was pricing them for. I'm going to try not to raise the price too much, just so it's just not like insane. Um, but I also, like I said, I need to make sure I'm pr pricing them appropriately. Um, and then to Super PG's question... A uh, good rule of thumb is to try not to pay yourself less than minimum wage with commissions. So, 
if you are... So if a half-body flat takes you, like, I don't know, I want to say two hours, three hours to finish to do something like this and line it and color it, you should not be paying yourself any less than what minimum wage for that job would be in your area. Sorry, I'm like, no. Now I'm enamored by drawing this little guy. So for example, min wage in uh, my state is 750, which is pretty abysmal. I think it's one of the lowest in the country. Um, which would mean if you spent two and a half hours on this, you would be paying yourself $21. But if you are also taking time to communicate with that person digitally and you're taking time to get references and sketch out the piece, you also want to include that time too. It's not just the amount of time that you take to draw the piece. It's also like business time interacting with that person. So if min wage in your area is like $9, uh, to do this in like two and a half hours would be... God, that's still not even very much. That probably would be 25. I just don't know how long it takes you to draw. Yeah, dude, I was working for 750 for the first few years that I worked. Ultimately, though, try to... My best pricing advice to you is if you... Don't take a whole bunch of commissions at once. Take like maybe two or three if you've never taken them before. Finish those two or three commissions, evaluate how you feel after finishing those commissions, and then gauge your price based off that. Like, if you finish three commissions and you've only made, like, 50 bucks, and you feel like dirt after you finish that for 50 bucks, you need to raise your prices. Minimum wage for me is literally $16 right now, but that's because a studio apartment is 2 k Mirimos, where do you live? Because minimum wage here is seven fifty, and every apartment where we live is also two k. Bro, I need to get out of the city. I feel like uh, rent prices are devilish right now, though. Every apartment is just 2 k these days. No, they literally are. Every every apartment is just, like, atrociously priced, and you'll go in, and there's, like, nails sticking out of the floor, and there's, like, the paint has been painted over all, like, all over the hinges and the wall sockets and everything. It's, it's, a, it's awful. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with her hair, actually. All right, if she's washing her face in the morning, realistically, she's not going to want to get it in her ears, so she's going to pull her ears back. But since those are her ears, she'd probably put them in a crunchy, crunchy, a scrunchy because it would hurt if it was like a tight ponytail. And then her hair is probably going to be like, this is like all her hair as opposed to the high ponytail that she does that's just like pulling stuff back. But I also feel like some of her hair back here is not long enough to go up in it, so it would come down. There we go. That's better. Yay, she's cute. Really hate to miss Laika, but I have to go in a sec because I promised to play Lethal with friends. Have a fun stream. Thank you for coming. <gasps> Hi. Cookie's boyfriend. Cookie scented... Wait. Cookie scented body wash and deodorant? Are you asking for me? Um, I would not like that. Well, okay, if we get it, I wouldn't be opposed to trying it, but let's have backup options, because that could smell really bad. Unless you were asked, saying that there's someone else in the chat, honey. I heard Thin Mint body wash I, it smells really plasticky. Ooh, now I want Thin Mints. Aw, oh, man. Now I'm hungry. I didn't eat before stream. I sat down, and immediately as soon as I went live, I was like, damn, I could really go for, like fast food right now. Although I just heard that we're boycotting Shake Shack, so... Although I haven't had Shake Shack for years, if I'm being quite honest. It sucks, and I'm pissed at them, but, like, I'm not missing out much. I'm not missing on something that was, like, loyal to, to begin with. Well, my state is still at the federal minimum wage, 725. I'm so sorry. Don't do it, Far. I still probably smell like Bath and Body Works vanilla candles. <laughs> Devil scent. Very real. Thin mints are so good if you could put them in a fridge. Oh, so real, so real, so real. I used to do that. I used to do that, although I will say uh, the one food that I vomited the most in my entire life is Thin Mints. Not because they are bad, not because I don't like them, but because I don't have any self-control around them, and I eat myself ill. And this has happened not once, not twice, but three times. 
My min wage is 10 10. Come to Michigan. Let's take ibuprofen together. Sorry, I keep like messing with her hairline. Proceed. That hairline. There was thin mint deodorant. See, like, I'm not opposed to trying it. Again, we have other deodorant sticks in case it doesn't work out. But, like, where does it go if it doesn't work out? Like, do we eat it? No. There we go. Give her a big ass for fucking forehead, a six head even. I'm allowing that. I just want to be real. Like I probably would not have like a no no forehead. I don't think. See, if the, anyone has a big forehead, UA probably has a big forehead. But I, he's handsome. I love him. The dripper. I, I really need to have like a I'll be right back screen because I also have to go to the bathroom, but it is like 8 o'clock. It is not time yet. They had lemon cookies and the shortbread ones too. Okay, see that does sound like it smell, it smell nice. You know what does strike me as the large forehead type. Um, actually thinking about it, when I've drawn Mars grown up, I've also given them, I just, I give everyone foreheads. Mars grown up with, with canonly has a big forehead. That's why they wear their hair like this. Because if you push their, their hair back, they have like the big, the big baby forehead. Big ass head. Go bathroom. I can go. I'll just straight like I'll be right back. You guys will be good in chat while I'm gone, right? Like you won't do anything bad. <laughs> no, that's what I do with my hair. I used to do that with my hair too. Like when I was a kid, I did the split part and I just had a big forehead. All right, behave. Hold on, hold on. I'm writing. Oh my god, it's ad break too. Perfect. It's perfect timing. I'm gonna pretend I strategized that. Ugh. I just walked out of the bathroom and was and Harbor was standing on the fridge, which is eye level to me. So I just made direct intense eye contact with Harbor. <laughs> what is happening in the chat? You is a baby girl. Is everyone freed from the ads now? Were you being good? I know you weren't being good because I could see I had my phone in the bathroom. But you weren't as bad as you could have been, so that's that's a, that's being good in a way. 
<laughs> I don't know if you is baby girl. I don't think... I think that he's a 45-year-old man and a father, and that's what I think. <laughs> that's what I think about UA. Hold on, I need to make her back bigger. I'm, I'll am i die before I draw myself like a without back muscles. And back fat. In this house, we do not draw people with unrealistic body proportions. How do you even wrap towels? Hold on. I, like, I know how to do this physically, but I don't think I actually have ever thought about how you would draw this. I think, okay, because it's like usually tucked under. This is normally where I would have Forrest grab a towel and physically do it. Is he really pathetic? I think he's cool. I think he's cool too. Well, okay. So people people think that Yue is pathetic because he gets thrown around by monsters in the first opening scene. But I just have to point out, who wouldn't get thrown around? The fluff... Oh, don't say that. I'm fixing it. I'm fixing it. You're right. It's good that you say that because then I know people on Twitter will be saying that shit. So it's better you say it now in Twitch chat instead of waiting for the Twitter gooners to get me. Sorry, I'm allowing it. Yeah, yeah. Well, so I was going to say, a lot of people say he's pathetic because he gets thrown around by monsters. But like, my purpose for showing that was not to make him come off as like pathetic or like not like a cool character. It was literally just to show the fact that like, he did try. Like, Yue tried his best to fight what is literally, like, an inhuman force strength of, like, creature that he's up against. It just so happens that Laika is smaller and more nimble, and he's a he's a dude. He's, like, a, a grown man. Also, that Laika's desire to protect others has made her run headfirst into danger ever since she was a puppy, and, like, that's always how it's been. If I was dealing with a monster, I'd, one, have a Lyos moment, but then, two, probably immediately die. Sorry, I like seeing my boyfriend is still sending the celibacy emote in the chat. Hold on, I have to figure out how to draw. And then, because the towel is going to, like, towels are weird. Like, they don't wrinkle as much as you think they would because they're made of thicker fabric. But they do a little bit. Like that. They're also fuzzy. Oh, her tail. I guess it's probably tucked. Like, she's not gonna make a hole for her tail to come out the towel. That doesn't make sense. Is Roboy celibate because he's ace, or is it just a joke? Oh, he is ace. Um, he, I asked chat when I was making it, if I was like, if I have to make a celibacy emote, is it bad to make the celibacy emote of the ace character? And everyone said no. Everyone who in the chat was ace was like, no, do it. It's funny. And I was like, okay, good. Um, but no, Ro Road Boy is by an ace. Um, it doesn't come out, it doesn't come up much in the comic. There is like a, okay, that's not true. I know things that confirm that behind the scenes, and I'm never secretive about it like Rope Boy's not ace, because there are important parts of the story that are affected by it, but at the same time, because sex is not really in like his comment, there's never like like there's never a moment where he's just like, yeah, and I don't be doing that. He there's a few like lines that get it across though. Oh yeah, he's by ace. The fact that you needed a celibacy emote to begin with. I mean, I asked what people would want, and they the, the people answered. Real question, out of all the like his comic characters, who would unironically do the Shinji chair meme? Honestly... If we're being honest, I would say Larkspur or Algernon, but like, Larkspur just because it's funny. Hold on. Did you send it in the... Deodorant smell. Oh no. 
<laughs> Roadboy mint deodorant smell. Actually, the real horrifying question Does Lycus Come have any arrow characters? Now I have to think. I wouldn't. I don't know. I don't think so, but that doesn't mean there can't be. It's just that of the main cast, like, I don't like, sorry, I can do like, uh, reveal. The only character that I could see that might be Arrow, and this is just because the only reason I don't really think much about Mars is like, uh, sexuality is obviously because they're a baby right now, but there is Mars like, grown up later. I could see Mars as being aromantic, just like in terms of, well, hmm. No, because it depends on what canon we're going with. In first can in like the current like is comic canon though, I could see them being aromantic when they grow up, just based off of like them and some things about like their history of the character. Also, it would just make sense with them. You think Chungus and Moat were not doing it? We're not. I can't do this. I'm sorry, but I feel like like when Roboy and Leica were little kids, they used Axe body spray. Help me. Uh, sorry, I'm like trying to doodle them quickly. Um, Leica is trans and bi, or trans femme and bi. Mars, as as it stands right now, is just non-binary and uses they them pronouns. Um, but again, that's because they're like a baby. Um, Le, sorry, not Leica. Road boy is by an ace. funny. I like his face. But I also draw him bald sometimes. That hair was atrocious. Ignore it. I'm not sure if you would be interested in making it, but maybe there's an emote for raids? We could do that. Wait, sorry. Uh, did Algernon's name come from the book? Yeah, it did come from Flowers for Algernon, actually. And also, um, a while ago, like when I was establishing Firth lore, I decided that basically like any animal character that exists in fiction uh, in our world, the real world, was a real figure in Firth. So, like, Tom and Jerry and Firth are comedians. They're, like, real dudes. They were comedians in this, the uh, 60s and 70s. Um, I like how you've drawn him very... Yeah, that's his resting face. Um, Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo is an animator for Hanna-Barbera in Firth. And he writes... He animates a mystery show. Algernon is trans and a lesbian and <laughs> silly UA. UA is trans and gay. And that's all. That's for the main characters at the very least. Do Salmon Max exist and are they lovers? I must know. I'm not a Salmon Max guy, but any char any animal character you can think of would exist in like his comic. Comic. Like his comet. Um, or at least in Firth, because like Lycus Comet is very the comic is very like sanctioned off to this like specific canon and time period. Um, but yes, they could, if you so desire. What about Scooby Don't? Hello. <laughs> is Jerry extraordinarily small? No, he's sized like Algernon. Um, actually, that was something that happened. And I st this is like not ex not canon yet. Um, but some of the Firth characters like are more size proportional, depending on the time period. Um, like there's uh, the detective noir story that I have that I wrote actually is my first story that takes place in Firth. And Whereas in Laika's Comet, there are characters that are more like, you know, if there was a chicken, the chicken wouldn't need to be chicken sized. It could be on eye level with Laika and they could just be having a conversation. Whereas in uh, Bones of Eden, the chicken is like chicken sized. The sizes are really all over the place, though. Like there is no like set um, reason for why they were the sizes they were. I think I just designed what felt best. Um, be star height logic, yeah. But um, no, everyone's everyone's like to size. Although there can obviously be shorter characters or taller characters, because like Turnip is really short. Um, she just so happens to be a pug. Like his comment, Tom and Jerry use perspective tricks like Hobbit Lord of the Rings style. 
What does Sonic like as Comet AU look like? I don't, I don't dislike Sonic. I just was never a Sonic kid, so I have not put any thought into it, nor do I have any desire to. But if any, if anyone wants to, you're welcome to. Do Pokemon exist? No, no, just normal animals. I love Pokemon, but Pokemon the franchise would exist on in on Firth, but like Pokemon themselves would not. And no, like at hey, least hey. hi. I didn't want to scare you. I never know how to approach you. No, it's okay. Um, I just get jumped. What was that? Do you want mozzarella sticks? Yes, actually, I'm very hungry. Okay, I'll put on mozzarella sticks because I really wanted sticks. They're screaming. They're screaming. They're awful hungry. Everyone's hungry. Imagine finding out your ancestors were tiny as hell. Firth, oh, Firth Garfield is also a comic artist. That was actually... So Firth Garfield and Odie are comic artists, and they write uh, their comic together, comic strip together that's about, like, a normal... Uh, I can't... I haven't decided whether or not they would write a comic about a human man, and everyone's like, whoa, human, such a crazy concept. Imagine if... <laughs> imagine if primates could have no fur. Um, I'm coming back to this hand later. For now, that works. Um... Oh gee, it's the first time I managed to watch you on live. At where I live, it's 2.25 and just got home. Oh my goodness. Thank you for coming in, Santos. Garfield writing about John. But yeah, that would basically be it. It's like, uh, Garfield and Odie would be uh, comic artists together. Um, I imagine Garfield to like be the... Sorry, now I'm like really enamored by... Garfield is like... The typical guy that like comes into the off the comic artist. He's got like the pencil behind his ear or the ink pen behind his ear. He's got a coffee. He's got ink stains on his uh, on his shirt. Uh, and Odie, I would I feel like Odie would be his colorist or or like uh, like assistant artist. Odie doesn't talk. He's just like he's there to keep Garfield company. Actually, if we're being real, Garfield would not wear a collared shirt. That's fake news. That's not real. The funny thing is, I imagine Garfield to have like this very cranky persona in the office, but actually be like a really nice guy. Are the Muppets canon? That's one I haven't thought about. Is like a huggy person. Yeah. Oh yeah, Leica is a hugger. Leica's a hugger, Mars is a little more selective with being touched and gets jumpy with it, and Yue is like the type of person that like wants hugs but won't like go up and initiate them, he just gets happy when you do. Um, I made his arms are stiff. <laughs> Garfield in stained t-shirt and jorts. Hold on. I really want to give him the coffee mug. The I Hate Mondays coffee mug. They were on sale. Ooh, muffins. Lemon poppy seed muffins. Who would eat lemon poppy seed muffins? Uh, in the canon? I already had Leica's doing that if she were to order from a bakery. Oh. What? Yeah, I can draw more of them later. I really do want to draw, and then, oh, if I can remember how to draw Odie. It's- I was never, like, a Garfield head, but I think I've mentioned it before, I used to cut out and collect comics when I was a kid, and that was, like, the start of my love for comics was the Sunday Funnies. S is Snoopy an Impressionist? Actually, Snoopy would also be a comic artist. Um, Snoopy- I, I was gonna say Snoopy, Garfield, and Odie all work in the same office. Same with the Pearls Before Swine guys. I don't know if anyone knows Pearls Before Swine, though. That was my- that was my favorite when I was a kid. I think this is how you draw Odie. I've never drawn Garfield or Odie before, astoundingly. I just- these weren't my guys. I was so much more a Snoopy guy. Curious about Roger and Jessica Rabbit. I guess that Jessica Rabbit would actually just have to be a real rabbit. That's the problem with some of these, is that they don't integrate as well. The other part of the reason that I didn't think about all of these is because I want to give people the freedom to do it on their own. Um, I have a Garfield Penn State shirt from the 70s that doesn't fit me anymore, but it's my favorite thing ever. That's cute. Moomin wouldn't exist just because Moomin is a troll, not an animal. Like, his 
So the rule of thumb I should I should say with these is that they have to be real animals because there are no uh, there's no unicorns on Firth. There's no like pegasi, griffins, stuff like that. Um, on Laika's comet Firth, there are on Jack in the World Sea, but that's not because they just happen to exist. That's because of something in Jack in the World Sea. Um, but for Firth, or at least for my ver variant of it, there's no, like, mythical creatures. Um, so that's why Moomin, since Moomin's a troll, would not be existent. Extinct animals? It depends how they went extinct. So dinosaurs aren't still alive, but uh, animals that were driven to extinction by mankind, they do exist, yes. Do you have any marsupial, marsupial Frothians? I don't think I do. Honestly, I think based off of my bias of where I grew up, I draw a lot of animals from like the uh, Northeast. And Calvin and Hobbes was on first. It should be Baby Hobbes has Calvin the human man as his imaginary friend. It's actually a really cute idea. Cough cats, yes. Would Hello Kitty be a thing on Firth? Um, Hello Kitty's not because I think Sanrio would come and get me, but I do have my own versions of like little series that exist on Firth across my multiple like comic ideas series. Actually in the um, office theory, the main character office worker is obsessed with what is essentially like their stand-in for Sanrio. Um, but it's called Forest Fellows, or like Forest Buddies. I hadn't decided between the two. Um, and the one that the office lady really likes is like this little, little dark bunny. Um, but everyone hates it and thinks it's ugly. Because it's like the least cute of the lineup, but she thinks it's the cutest one. It looks like this. Um, so it's basically, it's basically like, hi, Cr hi Nick, welcome in. But yeah, it's it's basically like a uh, Sanrio in-universe stand-in, but in you know this this is the one that no one likes and no one likes to get. I can't draw a broken heart very well, very tiny. Of course, Office Yuri, they're so pretty. I need that comic so bad. I will do my best to deliver it, but I will never I will never put it out before it's ready. So I I apologize. The wait may be a bit. Hello, hello. Stop flashbanging. Um, it may be a bit, but I hope to, to say it will at least be worth it. The other thing is that it is uh, much sillier than some of my other comics. Like whereas, like like his comet starts more like plot and lore driven. Office Yuri, I kind of I was allowed to be really silly right off the bat, and then it actually starts to develop a story after starting off super goofy. Um, which is part of the reason I'm actually kind of scared to put it out, right? Is that, like, I'm scared that by writing this, people will think that, like, I didn't, I don't have anything in store, or I can't write well, especially if it's what becomes popular. Um, and I think that that might scare them off from some of my later creations, so. I don't know, I have complex feelings about it, but I do really like what I've done so far, so. It's not gone, it's just, like, I need to think about it. It needs to cook. Just watch the latest Dun Meshi up. Ooh, I haven't seen it yet. Me and Forrest need to catch up. We're a little bit behind. I'm just excited because we're catching up to where I am in the manga. Um, oh. Have you read Scoob and Shag? I haven't, but I know about it. I don't know if it... <laughs> Obviously not the same at all, but I remember starting out silly and then becoming horror and plot driven. Like, I've heard that it's funny, but it just doesn't grab me in the slightest. I do understand why people like stuff like that, though. Oh my god, me having to draw the same angle back of her head over and over again. Okay, but that was a really good eye. Be the pain of not being able to draw the head angle, but getting the eye right away. Trade-offs. Oh my god, Shag keeps getting... Who's drowning me? I'm drinking, I'm drinking. Also, will I start reading Dungeon Meshi in the fandom? The fandom, what is wrong? 
<laughs> what is wrong with them? See, the crazy thing is I don't even think it's all of the Dungeon Meshi fandom because I really love my mutuals and a few people in the fan base really do understand like what the comic's about. But I think that the anime has brought in people that like haven't gotten to the point where the com I don't know. The comic really does have a turning point where like it goes from having its really fun silly soft introduction while not shying away from what the, the rest of the story is going to be about and then it starts to get into a little bit more of the serious territory of the story and i think that because the anime watchers haven't quite gotten there yet you have a lot of people that are not treating the characters very well I can't wait <laughs> fandom disease yeah but i'm sure it'll even out the office series needs to be waited for it to grow like making bread exactly the anime came out as nice because a lot more fan art is out, but I'm like, hmm, yeah. Well, and Lemmy said it best. I think that what's really disheartening is like seeing a, a show that has such strong, uh, like interesting girl characters just to have people not give a fuck about them when like the entire excuse people have in fandom have used for years is like, oh, well, I don't like any of the women because they're not well written. And I'm just sitting here like, okay. R Ryoko Kui did not cook for you to come in here and disrespect her this way. Please pay attention to all of the characters, not just whoever we've decided to yaoiify this time. Because, like, listen, I like gay men just as much as the, rest guy, the next guy who is also a gay man. But I also think that the girls are really interesting. Not, not even just really interesting. I think the girls are the most interesting characters. I also love Laios. Like, that's... I, I don't know. I always have to give a fat disclaimer that I like all of the characters, but it makes me sad to see some of the characters who I find to be the most interesting get overshadowed by characters that I'm like, well, they're good. I like them, but come on. Even it out a bit. We can have our yaoi, but Yuri must come first. Exactly. Well, it's, it's also just, like, it's the most text-supported like, also, Kiki and Namari never get any attention. Kiki and Namari, I know that they're, like, mostly in the side comics, but they're, like, really fun. I love them. I'm worried that season one will stop right as it ter the turn begins. I, I actually think that, well, because season one we're getting 24 episodes, so I think that we're gonna get pretty into it. Oh, why am I doing this? I forget she has her little hair bow. She's bald. Are they ready? Yeah. Oh no. It's okay. I'll leave them here. No, I just- they're gonna get cold. I didn't know you were making them now. I'm hungry. I'm sorry. You can have mine. Are you sure? Well, I don't like to eat during stream. Okay. I don't like having food ASMR. If you had your microphone settings, like I've been trying to eat- No, because then you- they can't hear you in the background. And I don't like- I get claustrophobic. Okay. Well, I'm gonna eat so you don't have food ASMR. <laughs> Thank you. That is not the- <laughs> Wait, sorry, I just look over and see boobs, dot dot dot. Mario's so fun. She's amazing. She belongs in Home Depot. Honestly, I know I know someone that's just like the Mario in real life, so I, I think that's why I'm endeared to her, is that she that I'm like, there's like at least three butch women that I'm friends with that are just Namari but real. I want to say, for the episodes, might shuffle around some of the manga. Oh, okay. Well, wait, sorry. Long message, but I watched all the Dungeon Meshi Netflix anime while- and then immediately read the whole manga while consuming some spoiler content. It was kind of odd how little- <laughs> how little Labru there was in the proportion of the fan content. It was disappointing both in- I was hoping for a brown character to ship, but also I realized that Farsil was so much more present and worthy of attention. Pray Lamb! That's what I've been saying! Not to mention part of- I actually don't even dislike Labru. I think that the concept is really interesting, but I can't stand it because of how weird people treat Kabru in the fandom. I love Kabru as a character, but it's like people cannot ship- like, a man of color with a white man without f losing their fucking minds. Like, they just don't know how to act. And that's a thing! I want people to have that, but, like, can you please treat him normally and acknowledge how, like, interesting and well-fleshed out his character is before you start... I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Cover is cool. He's also really clever, and, like, I like that his motiv- Like, his motivation's very driven, and he has, like, s like... He has so much potential as a character to write fan content of, and yet I just sniff sadly. 
Cool that tea, Willow. Sorry, I I don't talk about it on main because I, I just get scared. People get really fucking nasty to me, and I'm just like, but it's it's obje it's objectively true. <laughs> That's why I try like I try to boost up other people who say it because I'm just like, listen, I'm glad you said it because I don't have the I don't have the balls. I'm tired of getting I'm tired of getting fanfic writers telling me to kill myself. Oh yeah, there is so much for still though. Why not post it and turn off comments? Because that's how I get people emailing me, which has happened before, by the way. Uh, because I have my email listed so that I can take business offers and commissions and stuff. People, if you if you don't have if you have your add-ons turned off and if you turn off comments and if you turn off your blogs, f haters will find a way. They will find a way, and it's so scary. Or they'll make like burner Twitter accounts and comments on your Twitter posts. Terrifying behavior. The email one only happened once though. That was like a rare, rare occasion. I was like, hello? But I've lived haunted by it every single day since. They are. <laughs> I lose my mind, that's awful. They will find a way to hate you in some way. Well, so like, I, I was having like a internal like debate about this while writing the other day is like it's at, on at some point a lot of times people on my main will tell me like oh it's your blog do whatever you want with it like use it however you want and there was just a turning point on tumblr where i realized like regardless of the fact that my tumblr account should be my blog and like this should be my place to post nothing that i could do or say no matter how careful i was my words would always be mis misinterpreted by someone down the line because there will always be someone that just goes out of their way to take something in the worst possible faith, like the worst faith possible. Or, or if they don't misinterpret what I say, someone else will say something in the comments and their blogs and it'll start like a war in the comments and then that becomes my responsibility to inter- to like essentially to referee. I just decided after a certain point that like I- would rather spend my time making artwork and telling stories because if someone misinterprets a story it's i don't know there's like a level of depersonalization there like they are not if they don't if they can't understand something i've written it's either that i could have written it a little more clearly but if they don't understand it and a bunch of other people do then maybe that person just doesn't understand what i was trying to get across and that's fine whereas when it's just me talking and like trying to have fun on my, in my own net space and that in itself can get so horribly misinterpreted, it just doesn't become fun anymore. Still remember the Ramona Flowers gay girl post in the, the god. <laughs> that one was uh that was definitely one of the final nails in the coffin for me. For me posting more actively on Tumblr or anywhere for that matter. It was that one, it was the me talking about how I don't like to kill bugs, and then Twitter, they jumped me in the quote retweets and were like, oh, so if I have a cockroach infection or infestion, I shouldn't kill the cockroaches. And I'm like, now did I say that? That's an entirely new sentence. Oh, I'm sorry for ads. They don't understand a story. <laughs> it's their fault and it's way easier to separate it. Or it's like, it's way easier to try and learn from. Like, if someone doesn't understand a story, typically what they'll do is they'll say, like, this was confusing, I didn't get it. Or they'll specify, like, oh, I got bored and I stopped reading at XYZ point. And that's something I can change. If someone is just, like, they read something that I said and they were like, it seems like you have a hostile tone. I'm like, that's just how I talk. Like, I don't know what I can change because I'm just being myself. Whereas when I'm being a writer, that is very adjustable. You like waffles, so oh, you hate pancakes. Yeah, real. I like having an audience of 100 people basically is just basically being misunderstood 100 different ways. And on Tumblr, that happens the worst way possible. Well, and <sighs> Punkit said it at one point. There is definitely, there, for every piece of art, there's two different versions of that art. There's the art, there is the artist and writer's intention, and then there's the audience, audience interpretation. And while I'm not so like, you know, writer's word is word of God, I do think it's interesting how, like, those two works become more and more distant the less people care about what the author's intention was. However, I do think that the audience interpretation creates new art in its in a sense. Like, by interpreting something differently than it was intended, there is a lot of, like, creativity and beauty that's found in that too, and I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing. 
with art, for some reason, that feels okay to me. It's just how, it's like how I feel with theorizing, or like when people make like this comet theories, but they don't get stuff all, like all right all the time. I like to see that because I like to see the ways in which I can get people's gears in their brains turning. I noticed like his ear brought back with the hair in the first one. Yeah, it's so she doesn't get water in her ears. Well, and so, so that's the thing, right? Like, I never want to be so hard and fast. Like, you know, if you if you interpret something different than the the author's intention, then it's evil and bad. But I also think the author's intent is important. It's like we can consider both of these things at the same time, while also like giving room for new creative works and like ideas to flow. Um, that said, author's intent doesn't exist when I'm just talking as a human being because I'm not a fictional character. And I think that being so badly misinterpreted when I was just trying to have basic forms of communication was really getting to me because communication is already really hard being autistic. But like, I don't know, being misinterpreted on the, misinterpre on the misinterpretation website over and over and over again started to slowly drive me insane and like find a way to perfect communication, which just isn't possible. So instead, I decided to prioritize um, making artwork because, again, like I said, if art gets misinterpreted, something new and cool might be born out of it instead, instead of just me being enraged and confused. It's a little interesting to me because death of the author isn't meant to be used as what the author says their intent isn't valid, but just the author's intent is still just one interpretation of the work, but everyone uses it. Oh, Honey Drew Circus, I completely agree. Because what the author says does matter. As a matter of fact, what the author's intention, the reason the author's intention matters is because to say that the author's intent doesn't matter makes you susceptible to the things that the author was trying to get across that you might not even be willing to acknowledge or know about. It's in that way where people are like, oh, you can consume XYZ media because it's racist, because it's transpho transphobic, it's anti-Semitic, um, just as long as like you're not doing it that way. And I'm like, no, I actually think that you should be aware of and like observing the fact that this media was made with the intent of harming a group of minorities because you very well may be absorbing these biases without realizing it because you're so in denial that that's what it is about. Your take is actually very common in the idea in the literary study circle. Yes, that's because I wanted to be an English major at one point. I do love writing. Off topic, but I really like pers the perspective of that drawing. The one that I'm doing right now or the one that's like right here? The one I'm doing right now, I'm trying to pull, show how like his hair gets pulled back. Actually, if that's the case though, I probably need to... Because the hair is wrapping around, right? So there's going to be some of the wrap from this side, too. Not as much, just a little bit. I just don't want to make your head too big. Because that can also happen with back shots of heads. Terrified that exploring the goods and bads of nostalgia in my work will either come off as completely vilifying or romanticizing it. Uh, Lee Valley, I will tell you this. I think that the only way that you can change the black and white narrative around anything is by directly challenging it and you're going to it's going to hurt but there will be people that are incapable of breaking that mold but the only thing that you can do to try and change it is by directly tr challenging it and writing about it yourself like someone the other day asked if like has come as a uh antagonist uh character and part of me wanted to kind of be quippy in responding, but I didn't because I realized they were probably asking it in earnest. I, I did want to say, well, you'll have to read to figure that out as most stories go. But then I was like, no, they're, they're probably just asking in earnest because, you know, they're curious. Um, the truth is, I don't really personally believe in anything such as antagonist in real life. I do believe that everyone and anyone can serve as antagonistic forces to others, but like who is an antagonist depends largely on what your point of view and your perspective is in the story. Um, and so, yes, there may be antagonistic forces and different people that serve as antagonists in like his Comet, but there isn't an antagonist character because sometimes someone who might be like your friend serves as an 
serves as an antagonistic force in the next part of your life. And like, there's no way of knowing when that will happen. And also I feel like it kind of defeats the purpose of telling a story if I just tell you that right off the bat. Um, stop, oh, sorry. Oh, love your voice. Thank you. Happy stream. I love your voice, Willow. Thank you, Jens, Ma Jens Makina. Hi, Willow. Um, gee, I'm so happy I can stop by here. Welcome in. Me having me having my persona as a killer and having people go, oh, so you condone murder is something I can see completely. It's. I just remember when people started watching Hannibal and people were like, oh my god, he eats people and you like him? And I'm like, have you never... Have you never watched a character that you don't morally agree with the actions of completely 100% of the time? Like, I agree. There are some things that, like, we just don't need any more, like, oh, this guy is a fictional racist and cheer him on anymore. But, like, I don't know. I don't think that most people are going to watch Hannibal and go out and be like, I think it's time to eat people. I could be wrong. There have been some. But that's not most. It's true, it's important to remember that the antagonist is not synonymous with villain. Rather, an antagonist is simply a person whose actions oppose the protagonist. No, Kirsten, you're exactly right. And the reason that I even go on that spiel is because, like I said, I think everyone in their own time serves as antagonistic forces within our own own lives and within Lycus like Comet itself. So to say an antag is to answer the question of is there an antagonist character, there's not, because that could everyone at a different point in the story could be an antagonist character. Got drowned out when I sent... Oh? The Garfield shirt. I love the Garfield shirt. It's cute. Mars could be seen as an antagonist in the first chapter. Exactly. Well, and so... It, in my own life too, right? There have been people that like either initially started off as like kind of like hostile or like unfriendly faces that slowly be I got to know and understand that they weren't. And then on the flip side of that, there's been people that should have been like there for me in a moment when I needed them that were actually the opposite. That were kind of like hindrances or opponents when I wish they had been on my own side. Um, so to tell a story where there's just one clear-cut antagonistic force or character wouldn't feel honest to the life that I've lived so far. Alright, this is like her usual story hair hairstyle. Actually though, this can't be so swooping because that's more like it. And then this... yeah. The only thing is her bangs go up a little further than that. Yeah, there we go. Although I don't know if I like that little curly. I've met people who have thought a lot of things of me, both good and antagonistic, but I think there it's at least good to acknowledge that there is a gray area everybody has and try to learn from Yeah. I love the shape of the boat. It reminds me of Kiki's delivery service. Oh, see you later, Sugar Jolts. Thank you for coming. Or sorry, wait, no. Someone else is leaving, not Sugar Jolts. Mm. Oh, I gotta head out. See you, Maxwell. Sorry. Sorry for saying goodbye to the wrong person. And thank you for coming, too. I do have to make you guys a good night emote so I can see. I think when the chat moves so quickly and it's just text, I can miss people saying good night and I feel bad. Uh, but with the emote, then I can catch it because it's a picture. I'm a very, I'm a very image-based observer. And then, so her ear would be, like, here. Augie. The, the Augie. Sorry, I went silent. I'm just drawing anatomy. Actually, I could probably cut it off like this. Oh yeah, I'm gonna do like a UA goodnight emote and I'm gonna do I'm gonna do him in like a little nightcap.
Hold on, I have to draw the nightcap better. Because it looks kind of flat right now. Like, this, this is my vision. A grown man who carries a candle around with a nightcap. Like this. And then, and then... The pom-pom. Letters, yeah. Oh, his glasses. His hair's like a little more puffy than that. Yeah, something like that. That like is so cute. Thank you. I'm working on hairstyles. In his Scrooge era. No, he would never be Scrooge. He's a sweetie. Actually, I had, okay, uh, there was a drawing that I did of, so since there are some people that are members of my print club here, I was thinking of doing Leica and Mars, uh, for my next print club print, but then a while back, there was a drawing that I did of UA in, uh, their greenhouse garden, just like as a warm up, or it was like a little doodle, um, where it's like him in gray sweatpants and like a white tank top or like the wife beater with gardening gloves in like a bucket full of bok choy next to him. And he's like, it's supposed to be from the perspective of someone like looking down at him while he's working. It's supposed to be from like, like his perspective, um, like handing him lemonade or something. Uh, but I drew it and every, when I did, uh, all of my mutes on Peach said, I think I have COVID. So I'm like, I feel like maybe I've I've cracked something here. Like I need this needs to be a print because all of the UA fans are going to go bananas, crazy bananas. Um If the bear on the Sleepy Time tea box existed in the first universe, he and you would probably get along. Well if Scrooge died after waking up from the ghost encounter, do you think that would make his character development pointless? Sorry, discussed this in a lit class earlier. Hmm. It would just feel very Catholic, if that makes sense. Like, it would mean that he doesn't have any chance to, like, um, undo the life that he lived before. And if anything, it feels like his redemption is purely for his own gain rather than to actually change anything that he'd inflicted upon other people. So I wouldn't say that the character development would feel, like, pointless for him individually. It would just feel very Catholic. Like, that's the only way I could say. Oh, thank you for the subscription, Starry Ocean. Uh, my my means of judging writing is based off of, does this feel like a story that the Catholic Church would condone or, like, teach? And if it ended that way, then yes, that is how. Now, the other thing I'll say is that Scrooge, as a character, if I'm not misunderstanding, I could be misspeaking, is a pretty anti-Semitic character. He's a greedy mis miser that is often depicted with having a larger nose and that, to me, feels pretty anti-Semitic, but that may only be popular portrayals of him that I have been shown throughout my life, and that might not actually be true to the character at all. Um, and that only just condones itself. I just realized you had, print, you had a print club and joined. I do! I have a print club, and the first thing is going to be... Um, the a carry print that I did on stream a while ago. But anyway, that said, I just I Scrooge's story always like kind of fell flat for me because it's like this character this feels like kind of a anti-Semitic caricature. And I know that the story is supposed to be about like greed, but like when the, the story is you take an anti-Semitic caricature and you take him down like this journey of becoming like more of a generous figure almost through like a Catholic style redemption, uh, where he re recognizes the wrongs of his ways, it never sat well with me. Um and I don't know much more about it than that. I just, I, it always left a little not great feeling in my tummy, is all I'll say. I don't think that the idea of, like, I don't think that, be, like, the idea of teaching, a like, an old man, businessman 
to be not greedy and to like recognize the wrongs of his ways in itself is a bad story though if that makes sense i just think that there are elements of the story that make me eyebrow quirk a little bit that could be done differently what did i drop in on welcome in yaji gay we're talking about a christmas carol um and whether or not scrooge's character development in the christmas carol will be pointless if he died at the end sorry someone in chat asked and i wanted to answer curiously I know the My Little Pony of it maybe go question mark. I've never seen the My Little Pony version. I have a friend very into a Christmas character, Carol in an autistic way, and I believe at least some of the anti-Semiticness is an ev evolution of pop culture. That's actually true. Also, sorry, Esther, I wanted to make sure I didn't miss you. But yeah, I, I actually think that that's something too, right? Is that like, whether or not an original story, or whether or not the original source material was anti-Semitic, racist, etc., how it's interpreted is also largely reflective of the society that it was written in and it can like it can mean that a story that originally had none of those like biases or hateful values in it gains them by inter being interpreted and of course of course sorry there's a lot of stories like that actually i'm like blanking that we, we did one in animation history and i'm blanking on it right now but i remember looking at it and being like that's crazy like i thought it was always like this but it was just it was just how it was animated Sarah doesn't even try to stop it or anything. She's just like, eh, I don't want to celebrate. And Twilight's like, mm, let me teach you about the power of Christmas cheer. Okay, Shigeru Jolts, that's what I was going to say. I did think that Charles Dickens did was an anti-Semite, so I, I, that was my other thing. It was him and uh, someone else who's like a big fantasy writer. The guy that wrote, I think the guy that wrote The Big Friendly Giant, Giant but don't quote me on that. The unfortunate reality of like a lot of... um fantasy and fairy tale and like kind of children's book writers um from the 30s 40s 50s or really just anything beyond that is they will always be one of the three they'll either be racist homophobic or extremely ableist and there's like no in between i i can't say i know anyone that didn't fall into that unfortunately road doll yeah unfortunately i think road doll was like really anti-semitic Well, and I don't, and the thing is, I don't bring this up to be like ruined childhood either, because I think that's really defeative, defeated. It defeats the purpose of mentioning it. It's not like, oh, look, this person that you liked was a piece of shit. It's like you bring it up so that people can start to reflect on the values and the things that they were taught in the stories they heard as kids and try to like recognize that the visuals you've associated with like certain things are because the person the people who made those visuals were trying to make you like them they were trying to make you racist or anti-semitic where yeah lovecraft lovecraft's another great example dragging my paws down my face looking out in the distance about the strange racism throughout mlp that's a good example for sure too there's a lot of actually there's actually a lot in mlp and i like going back and watching it i'm always just like how did i miss this as a child um, but yeah, like, the reason I bring it up is not to, like I said, not to be like, ruin childhood, oh my god, everything you love is horrible, it's literally just so that you can, oh wait, what am I doing? Why not just, hold on, think smarter, not harder. Um, it's so that people can, like, learn how to not incorporate those same elements in their own works, or learn how to catch them themselves. Because ultimately, my ideal world would be one where everyone can write and tell stories and have creative freedom while not hurting anyone else in the process. It's not its not highly plausible, but I'd like to work towards a world like that, at least. Do you know the Lycus comic characters' birthdays? I have them on Toy House, and actually, I'm a, I'm a horrible... Uh, I'm a horrible godfather figure. Uh, Mars's birthday was March 3rd, and I literally just forgot that I made their birthday March 3rd. And now Leica's is April 1st, so I know that that's coming up soon. But yeah, Mar Mars's birthday came up recently and passed. Is this a specific character to Yajige? Yes, actually, this is my OC Leica. Um, she's from a webcomic that I write. Also, sorry, the answer's a bit late. This is Leica from Leica's Comet. Actually, I'm gonna write it normally, because my bubble letters can be illegible sometimes. <laughs> Um, and it's a webcomic that I write, and I don't know. I, I feel like it's best read blind. <laughs> Today, someone in the tags of the new Leica's Comet page, I'm gonna like... 
Hold on. First, I'm going to crop this so I crop out their username because I don't want them to get, like, jumped. Um, but... <laughs> I got a tag on the new Like His Comet page that made me, like, giggle a little bit. Um... Hold on, here it is. <laughs> this person was, like, gushing. They're like, this comic is really good. It's It was really boring at first, but it gets really good. And I was just like, thank you. Thank you for that. Because at, at, the other disclaimer I'll give is the person who left this tag is, like, a teenager. So my thought, while at first my heart stung a little bit, I had to be realistic about this. And I was like, listen, if my comic can appeal to the teenage, the Gen Alpha teenage attention span, then I've done something right. And this is probably the closest I can get to a compliment. So that's okay. And you know, it was said complimentary anyway. So like, I just think that people don't know that I read the tags. Like when people leave comments and stuff, I'm like, I see you. I'm reading this. I know I, I giggled too. Like I, I, I giggled too when I saw it. Um... But yeah, that's what, that's also why I cropped their username. I don't want any, I don't want anyone like getting them because the, you know they're they're a kid or she's a kid. Like it's it's not like <laughs> it's not that deep. I I have a a thicker or I have a stronger spine than that, I guess. Um, but it was very funny to see it and just be like, well, I guess there's think she could have said something worse. So like that's okay. I'm glad that ultimately people do wind up liking it though. <laughs> Welcome in, Wild West lover. That is really funny. You whisper. Oh, I did miss two posture checks. I'm sorry. I'm sitting up. Gen Alpha and Boomers have way more in common than I want. Well, I just think these things are cyclical, right? Like, you know, we had a few generations of being like really feminism forward and really like pro gay rights. And I think because of that and because everyone got really comfortable, now you have a younger gen that's like just very comfortable being openly homophobic, but like ironically so. And I. I think the best way to approach that is not to allow them to continue and just trample over all I'll trample all over their gay and trans peers, but I also think that part of it is not talking down to them like they're stupid or like they don't, you know, they're not capable of controlling their actions or they're too dumb to understand them. It's to make them aware of the fact that that's like it hurts people like what they're doing and that it's not all irony because at the end of the day that is like a very real person and their livelihood tabbed out for a second just talking about like how younger gens have unfortunately like there's a lot of uh like pushback to feminism and like the generation that our kid is from not him but like some people that i know and that also like unfortunately gen alpha to my like witnessing has become very like they've uh, revisited the ironic homophobia area era that i thought we could kind of like left behind in the 2010s uh but on that same note, I do have faith that things can change and that, you know, the nature of trends and the way that teens behave is cyclical and eventually people will mellow out and the only thing you can do for them in the meantime is trying to keep the the gay kids safe so that they're not getting bullied and try and help the kids that might be kind of asses to them to realize that what they're doing is dickish without talking down to them either. I think generational differences pale in comparison to things like class, wealth, class and wealth differences too. That is true. It's slow in the way Ghibli movies can be slow in the beginning. Well, and with Leica's Comet, I needed to be slow in the beginning. Like, I I actually, the reason I also giggled at that comment, 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 there we go, um, is because my little sister was one of my first readers for Leica's Comet to like, because she reads a lot of comics and I wanted her to sense on it. And her initial take was that like Leica's Comet was that she liked it but the first chapter was actually kind of fast and I was like I know and I feel at some points that I speed through stuff that I wish I could go slower through but because people's attention spans are so short I have to be aware of that like if I even if I want to go slow here I have to figure out how to communicate my point quickly because no matter how much I would like to think people will stick it through, there are going to be people that get impatient and stop reading. Um, so she was like, that makes sense. And then like you do, and she was like, you do communicate everything. Like you get across everything you need to for this chapter. Uh, just don't be afraid that like when you get to the lore parts of chapter two to slow down a bit, because now that you've hooked people in with your like first, ch your first chapter, you can take your time a bit more. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's the plan. It's why chapter two is like 85 pages and chapter one was 50. Um, 
but I also think I've gotten faster at drawing, so like that's part of the reason why that why chapter two can be a bit longer. I know redoing early cha comic early chapters in a comic is a death loop, but for a physical release, would you ever consider doing an extended first chapter? I'd have to think on it. I may be wrong, but did you make Leica's birthday the day you first created her as a character? I did. Yes, uh, Leica, I made her on April 1st, on April Fool's Day as a joke, and then I wound up really liking her. So her birthday is the day that she was created, yes. I love it when media is slow, though. I love slice of life moments. I, I do too. I feel like for webcomics, people's attention spans seems to be incredibly short. Um, it is because of the update speed, and also I think because people forget they exist. Uh, so if something is not moving quickly enough, like, it, when I write scenes, typically speaking, if something is going to take more than two weeks to get across, the point has to be very, very important, because in two weeks, if my readers start getting cranky that we're going through the same point still, they're going to stop reading. Um... But that doesn't mean that I speed through topics that are a bit heavier and do genuinely need the um, time to be discussed. I just try to favor showing over telling and also like I try to have in more intriguing visuals when conversations go on a bit longer. That is actually the current episode we're on. I'm, I've been a little scared that that's going to happen with this one, but it's a conversation that needs to happen. So it's like, ah... Uh... Stick it out. I promise we get into the action later and very shortly. Everyone should set up an RSS feed so they can easily stay up to date on their web webcomics. Cough caps, that's true. I resumed Haibane Hi Renmei after years and I love the cozy mysteriousness. I love that. I do love Haibane Renmei. Oh, so I see the hydrate from Cider, Cider Space. I will hydrate. Good night, Luz Santos. Thank you for coming. I think this... well, actually, if anything, this ponytail would need to be lower because her hair is not that long. So I actually have to drag this down a bit. Oh, that already looks better. Yeah, that's... that's that looks more... Ah, wrong layer. There you are. Because with shorter hair... Anyone that's ever had a short haircut and tried to pull up their hair in a ponytail will know this. If you have shorter hair, there's like a limit to how high your ponytails can be because the back of your hair just won't reach up that far. So if she wants like the full ponytail, it's going to have to be down lower because otherwise it won't actually catch all her hair. Honestly, though, I kind of like the bow when it's just peeking out a bit because I think it looks very cute. And now I can kind of do that more pulled back style because... She's grabbing more of it. Yeah, there we go. So many strands outside the ponytail, it is. It's so painful. I have an undercut and have to wear hair up at work. Real, oh goodness. Oh good lord. I hope you're okay. I hope that doesn't get too annoying. I love the half up, half down hair. Yeah, this is her in comic hair. And then... She also, at one point, I did want to put her in a bun. But I don't know if I'd put her in a bun, like, all hair, or just, like, some of it. She does seem like the type to put, like, a pencil through her bun. Like... No, actually, she wouldn't do that. Hmm. I'm gonna draw this one from the side, though, so we don't have just the same angle over and over again. I wonder if I could give her different bang styles, actually. Doesn't really have access to, like, a curling iron or anything. And Wait, I just realized, are you using Photoshop or something else to draw? I'm using Photoshop. Um, I use Photoshop. I have been a Photoshop guy since I started doing digital art. Well, that's not true. I used to use MS Paint and a mouse, and then I used Fire Alpaca because it was free. Uh, but then as soon as I got to high school and got to the school library computers, I started using Photoshop. And then the school offered a license for Photoshop, uh, so then I had to start paying when I graduated high school, which was not fun. Also, if she's wearing a bun, it's actually probably gonna be... If anything, she would probably wear, like, um... 
a more compact ponytail for it because she wouldn't want it to be getting in the way. Could give her like ties though. Yeah, that would probably be it. I get it, I have two screamy kitties. Oh, are the kitties screaming in the background? I have noise canceling headphones on so I can't hear. Promise I fed him, he's just talking. <laughs> Wet food with salmon oil and hot water because he's special. He needs his soup. We don't want him to have to get surgery. Oh, her head's too... No, her head needs to be bigger. Gotta bring that nose out. Actually, now that I'm doing this, this is making me want to put Road Boy's hair back. His hair is so messy. Every time I draw it, I'm like, oh my god. This would go crazy on a motorcycle. Peepus? Male cats are prone- Oh, okay, 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 okay. What is your process for paneling in your comic pages? Um, honestly, I- My panels- my panel work isn't bad, but it could be better, and I'm studying a few different comic textbooks right now to learn how to make it more interesting. Typically speaking, what I do is I think about what angle I want to portray, and what panel would give me the most space to portray said angle. So like, if I'm trying to do a character like looking up, like let's say I'm drawing Mars looking up at something, I'm probably gonna do like a long panel because this gives more space so it gives like the illusion of there being more space above Mars when in reality a wide angle of that exact shot it wouldn't not portray space but it would portray like wideness more than it would height and so I think of what shots I need to do and what shots I need to get across in the page and then I do my best to finagle it so that I could fit all of those on the same page and usually it works out pretty well uh, but then some pages that are just like talking scenes, they can get a little boring sometimes, I'll admit. Do you like doodle panels or do you do more strict <laughs> Let me- actually, this is what I can do. I can pull up some of the sketches for chapter 2, the earlier parts of it. Um, because I hold on to all the sketch pages of the comic once the pages are rendered. So like- Hold on, I just need to find- I'm just trying to find one that has interesting panels. Actually, here's a really good example. This is the page that like came out today, or like came out this week. So these, this is like what my pages look like when I sketch. Um, it's pretty much just drawn, but that's because my, I'm not a, I'm not a scribbly sketcher so much as I am. Like I'll just draw the stuff and like make it tiny adjustments. Hey, if I want to sub to your Ko-Fi, should I only do that if I want early pages? No, you're more than welcome to sub. Like you don't have to. Do whatever is most accessible to you, um, but if you want to sub anywhere, I would say that Ko-Fi is probably the best because it's the one that gives me the bigger cut, whereas Twitch is not so much. But I'm going to grab this page so I can show what it looks like when it's done. And sorry, just really like comparison. This is what a finished page looks like. This is what the pages look like when they're sketched. <laughs> they, uh... It is pretty much all the shapes are there. I think the one thing I don't always get down is like background elements like lighting. Also, I, I'm pretty sure you can see the lighting changed here where originally it was like more this lighting. Uh, I realized that the sun is probably going to be like here in the sky by this point. So the light's going to be hitting the ground and bouncing up and more evenly lighting everything. So I'm not going to get this like harsh side shadow like I would. Um, and also I wanted UA to be more in focus, so I didn't shadow him here. Uh, but like, it's little stuff like that that changes between sketch and final. Uh, not a whole bunch. I adore how bright and dynamic your panels are. Thank you. There's lore in the Ko-Fi you should join. Yeah, there is actually a lot of stuff that's in the Ko-Fi that isn't public facing too. So if you're a lore head or you're a theorist, it's like probably the best spot. Love how logical your thought process is. Thank you. I was a 3D animator for like five years. So like the scientific part of art. Oh my God, her head's so squished. Sorry, I just opened this again and now I got a fresh set of eyes on it. We have to redo that. That was atrocious. She had like pug nose. Um, but yeah, I the 
the lighting and science part of art is kind of like unfortunately really deeply ingrained in my brain. I don't think I could get it out if I wanted to. And sometimes it makes it more challenging to do like um like more conceptual pieces or like more pattern or like design I don't know how to describe it. Like you know when people can do art pieces that feel like just a bunch of stuff put into the background of a piece but it works really well as background. That kind of stuff is super duper hard for me because it just like that's not how my brain works. If I'm imagining something, I'm imagining like a scene. Like I know exactly where I am. I know what time of day it is. I know what the weather is. I know if we're indoors or outdoors. So doing stuff that's not like a rendered scene or just a single character standing portrait is pretty hard. Hmm. Wa mention comics that I recommend to do comics. Witch Hat Atelier. Oh, oh, oh. I have all of Witch Hat Atelier, or I have almost all of Witch Hat Atelier on my shelf right now. So I, or is it Atelier or Atelier? I do plan on reading it, though. I have seen some of those panels. Also, good lord, the manga's ink work is gorgeous. Like, it actually makes me want to return back to doing physical ink work for my comics if it wouldn't take, like, five billion zillion years. Um, but they make me so envious. I'm like, this is this is like the ma kind of manga that would have made me go crazy as a kid and just, like, go on an uh, inking binge. Inkwary is hard, but it's very, very rewarding when you do it right. I've only done um, Inktober a few years, and I only got close to finishing one year. I got to day 26, whereas every other year I've gotten to like day five and then been like, I'm tired. I don't want to do anymore. Um, but every year I've done it, the pieces that I get out of it, like first day is kind of rough. Second day, we're getting better. By the third or fourth day, I am like r knocking out pieces that I would not have thought I was possible or was capable of doing because challenging yourself to do think only in black and white is like it's it's neat and it's not how my brain works instinctively because I'm a very color guy uh but I it used to be all I did when I was like a comics artist and drew everything traditionally so it's like returning to my roots basically dusting off the old tools they say atelier atelier Lie? Oh, is that actually how you pronounce it? Huh. I have to go eat dinner. Thank you for coming in, Asteri. Asteri, sorry. I do want to fix, fix the bun. I feel like I had... Did I have her in a bun in this... Also, did I or did I have her hair down like... Oh, wait, no, I had her hair like this. Where it was like actually up in a bun, but there was like the pieces coming down. And then I think this is her overalls outfit, too. Oh, her ears! Bald. She cannot hear. There we go. Now, okay, wait, I'm going to make the UI go away, just because it's not on topic. I'm grabbing you, putting you there. In the meantime, I am going to do road boy hairstyles. I really appreciate how much you always take time to explain your processes and make methods accessible to everyone. Watching your streams has really helped me with my art. Thank you! I'm, I, I really do try, not just because for streaming purposes, be, but because I want art to be something that everyone can join along and play with, because I love it so much. Like, it does make me happy to know that I'm helping people do that. Um, I just, I was, it, it wasn't natural for me to be able to do this, so I'm glad that it's paying off, because it's, it's hard communicating sometimes, something that I do so instinctively without thinking. Road Boy Spa Day. His his mouth is so long in this. It's kind of funny. Oh, I heard a doo 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 doo. Hello, welcome in, bananas in space. Pol polarity. Thank you for the sub, polarity. Um, actually, speaking of subs and like print clubs and stuff, um, the print club orders like 
for the carry print, I'm gonna place the carry print orders in the next three days. So if you wanted to get the carry print, uh, now would be the time to join the print club. The problem is I can't guarantee that I can sell it in the shop afterwards because I'm afraid of like a Nintendo lawsuit on my ass. Um, so it probably will only be available to print club members, but then later prints, like if I do stuff for Leicas, they should be available to sell in the shop if you don't want to be a part of the club. Um, I just want to make sure that people who want the carry print will get it while they have the chance. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, sorry, hold on, I can show it to you. I have it in my, I have it in my art pictures folder. Here it is. This is the print that's going to be the print club send out in the middle of probably near the end of March. It'll probably go out. Closed mouth road boy. Yes, for once he is being polite. He's being quiet. Oh my god, his mouth is so long. I don't know if I drew him closed mouth in the other in my practice pages of him. Come here, I need to look at you. I literally don't think I did. Well, I guess I drew that one. Hold on. Fading it quieter. Also, I'm gonna draw in black because I want to. Since Roboy's not in the comic yet, I do like a lot of warm-ups of him, but I don't have the same confidence in drawing his design as I do with Leica and Mars, because I draw them like so constantly, always, forever. Which is why I've started doing him for these little warm-ups and stuff, so I can get more accustomed to his design. And you know, that's just part of like drawing a character for anime share and comic that you haven't yet had to do as much. There's gonna be that rocky period where you're getting the feel of how you wanna draw them. Uh, in the style of the comic, because you can have your design and you can have like a design page and have drawn them a few times, but nothing compares to actually having to draw them like hundreds of times in many different angles and le levels of detail for a comic or animation. Um, but for the time being, I think I've pretty much nailed how I want to draw him. I'm just trying to make sure it's at least consistent. Because one of the sins I commit with Rogue Boy's design in the early parts of the uh, brainstorming process was that my design for him was really inconsistent. Like, he jumped all over the place and I was like, who is this man? I have to make sure I get his winged eyeliner, though. Where would Rogue Boy be without his goth makeup? The guy liner. Been out running around, so I need to be horizontal or else I'd be more talkative. Oh, did he get summoned? Also, thank you, Kirtsen. I saw the compliment on my use of color. <laughs> it's guy liner. He wears guy liner. He doesn't. I. There was a substitute teacher that I had in middle school, and that was the first time I heard the word guy liner. And because some of the boys in my class were making fun of him, but I thought he was really cool. I always thought he was like one of our coolest substitute teachers. And everyone's like, no, he was a, he's a boy and he wears makeup. He wears guy liner. And I was like, well, I, thought, I think that's cool. Well, what's so wrong with that? So middle school substitute teacher, Mr. Buzz. Thank you. I thought you were cool. I thought I liked your makeup. Top left is giving Bruce away. It's his sad, wet face. Sad, wet, dejected face. Having to draw him from the different angles. I think, because the thing is, I, very, I, I like doing him from front facing, and I like doing him from side, and I like doing him, but I haven't done like the three fourths or the angles in between, and I think that's what I need the most, the most practice with, is getting some of those in there. Real quick, should I make that art idea I had yesterday come to life or work on a story? Art, art, art. I think I first heard it from someone talking about Adam Lambert. He's got byliner. This is true. The pointy. Oh, I guess I, his little bang flip thing goes higher up on his head. There we go. That's more. That's more like it.
the shape of Road Boy's hair is what perplexes me. Because it's trying to put the shape, it's like trying to put human hair shape around a dog head. Which furries have been doing for ages, but a lot of fursuits just have hair that goes like this. And, I, and then it goes like between the ears, and that's not what I'm looking to do here. Perfectly fine if that's, that's the, your cup of tea, but me personally, I like having characters with long hair. Also, because like, I'm sorry, I've never met... A pers I've never s met a person who I looked at and was like, if you were a furry, your first sentence would be a wolf, and not like, then they didn't have long hair. There's, I, I just don't think the animal, the wolf, would have short hair if it was a person. Maybe like a grizzled truck driver might have a wolf fursona, maybe, but I honestly see that more as like a German Shepherd, personally. Um, and a German Shepherd would have a German Shepherd could have short hair. They could also have long hair. My brother, he's like a weird main wolf. Oh yeah, your brother, the, the reason I draw your brother so long is because his first son is a main wolf, in my mind. Wait a second, Rope Boy is kind of gorgeous. I think I'm the first person that's ever realized this. No, the first person to ever realize that was Laika. But you're okay, it's okay, you can be a solid second. That's the that's actually also part of the lore, um, and it's like vaguely mentioned in the chapter I'm writing right now as like a, th a throwaway gag. Um, Roadboy and Leica dated briefly, but it was like the kind of like you date your childhood best friend because you spend all your time together and you're like discovering what romance might be. And very very quickly after they did that, they were like, no, actually this is not fun. We don't like this, and they just went right back to being best friends again. Um, but, like, Roadboy in-universe is considered very handsome. It's just that his personality is so deranged that the second the people start talking to him, they're like, what is this guy on? He's cracked. And then they start to love him again. Every grumpy wolf in Animal Crossing is an old man to me. This is true. Old men can have long hair, though. Alternatively, give them beards, because that's awesome. Wish hot people were like him. That's I listen. It's wish fulfillment. I make like his comment to the people that I, for the people and that I want to exist and the people that I want to meet. Sorry, I'm trying to do his little hair flippies too not make him look like a pine tree. Where are my crazy ass hot people for real? Beards and long hair, that's Gandalf. Are there birds and reptiles in Firth? Can they also have hair? Yes, they can. And yes, there are. Um, Not many bird main characters, to my understanding. Reptiles, I have this... So, okay, depending on the reptile, because like there's a lot of weird reptiles out there. If a reptile has hair, it's because they're wearing a wig. Reptiles don't grow fur. Um, and they don't grow hair, but there are different ways that you can style their scales and stuff. Birds, on the other hand, uh, style their feathers, and their feathers grow out in the same way that, uh, furry furthians hair does. Um, but in the sense that when you draw their hair, a bird furry's hair is never going to look like this, unless that's the specific texture of feathers that they have. Typically their hair comes in, like, floppy, like, feathery styles. So, like... Like so. And then, of course, it has the tendency to stick up. Because it's not exactly hair, but it's kind of hair. The, the, and the physics of it work more like feathers would. Have you seen some birds out there, though? Well, yeah, so, like, something like a secretary bird, or, like, the ones that have, like, the, the puffs on their head that look like this, you could easily give them that texture of feathers on their head. But for something like a sparrow that doesn't grow those tufts of feathers on their head, a sparrow would have more, like, floppy feathery hair. Does that make sense? Based off the anatomy of the animal, um, with the exception of if you want to give a bird dreads, please give a bird dreads, or twists. I'm... 
I'm at a loss for which word is the one that people fur used. I want people to be able to have their hairstyle on their furry characters, if that makes sense. So that law does not apply if you want to have a character that has like a hairstyle that would be coiled or with more thick, thick curly hair. Sorry, now I'm drawing this bird. I don't know who this is. I don't. This is not a character. I just drew this for this like for this example. But I think that they're cute. I don't. I think I have. I don't think I have any bird characters that have longer hair. Because I usually give them like little tufts of hair instead. But I think this looks cute. Friendly. Twists and locks are different. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I wanted to be sure I was using the correct term, but I also. Well, so I did know that. But I also didn't know if there was a preferred term. New character just dropped. Maybe a background character. I saved them all. It's a black person. I use dreads, but locks are the usual term. Twists are a different style. Thank you, Prelam. Yay, the funny. Okay, now I can get back to drawing rope boy. I well so so rope boy usually has very like the fluffy spiky hair. So trying to imagine him having it in any other style would be funny. I could like an N style pony like N from Pokemon style ponytail would work just fine. Um but now I'm just thinking about like trying to trying to put it in twin tails. It would be messy. Let's see. And actually, this is probably going to have to tuck in closer because he's got that shirt collar that comes in. Half up bun. This boy does not know hair care, does he? No, he doesn't. No, actually, and that was something that someone mentioned a little earlier is that ro the Road Boy and the mint cookie flavored deodorant smell. And I just sat there for a very sad, haggering moment thinking, would Road Boy even wear deodorant? And I didn't want to answer that question. Like, as, as, as the creator, I didn't want to think about the question because the answer is too frightening to consider. N from Pokemon remains an enigma to me. I like N from Pokemon. He's funny. I don't know, ever since I just, ever since you got to the end of the game and he's just kind of chilling, I was like, nah, you're fine, actually. You didn't, you didn't mean all that. And thank you for sharing your wisdom with us. You're welcome. Rope Boy, where's the wet dog cologne from Monsters Inc? No! Stop! I don't want to think about it. I'm a smell I'm a smells person, so this is like hurting me. But I have to be realistic. I don't think he would think to do it. Road Boy Road Boy lives in like what can only be described as like a man cave. It's really not looking good for the Road Boy fans out there. He lives in a hollowed out mall inside an arcade and with trash that he scraps from a junkyard and old cars. It's not looking good, Road Boy fans. I'm sorry. The character doesn't wear deodorant, not on purpose, though she just forgets. I mean, some people do. He would eat the thin mint deodorant? That is actually true. Do dogs sweat? Um, I hadn't thought about that. I'm gonna be honest, I know that dogs don't sweat, I know that, like, in real life they just pant, and I have drawn, like, a, like, a hot before, and, like, with the, like, sweat drop emoji, so I guess? Some, some of my furry world building is, like, based on actual animal, animal science, and some of it is just, like, eh, felt right. Plus, my music ended. Hmm, Minecraft music. You're making me kin him. Not gonna lie, I feel like Roadboy would eat chapstick solely because it smelled good. No, he's definitely an eater. I mean, okay, 
So, uh, also some more because this is going to be talked about in the comic and I don't want to spoil anything too funny. Roadboy was raised after being found essentially like feral on the side of the road, um, with thus the name, is that the people that found him, he knew his own name at one point, but they forgot it, so he wound up forgetting it too. Um, and so his adoptive fathers like raised him as best they could, but he was not very well behaved at first, and he was raised like not in a traditional child sense. So like he's he's definitely an eater. He would eat whatever he could get his hands on. Harbor. Yes. Where are you? Oh hi. He's playing in a box. New pole will road boy get tetanus. Also, I saw someone say, okay, but that's sick. I don't know if it was to what I said or if someone else was something else in chat. I'm so sorry. How do I make him sit? <laughs> Actually, I think this would need to be bended a little more anyway. Kibby? Yes, he's rowing. The way he's standing makes me think he's a polite young man. He tries. He's not mean, he's not like abrasive or anything. He's just a little goofy and silly. A little goofy silly. I think at the end of the day, Roadboy might be energetic, but he's still the kind of guy that helps old ladies for free because he's a nice dude. He also just makes a very big show of it and is like, that's what heroes do. And then poses and then they're like, okay, come inside. We're feeding you dinner so you don't eat dry ramen packets for the third meal in a row. get a treat he's like rainbow dash i would say that rainbow dash is like a little more the difference between him and rainbow dash is that rainbow dash is like kind of dickish but in a way like okay rainbow dash is the if we're being honest here when people say they want more mean women what they want is rainbow dash <laughs> that's like i think that's what people are they, they they forget that my little pony already gave us a mean woman it was rainbow dash um Whereas Roadboy's not R Roadboy is not dickish. He's just a little goofy, little older brotherly though. Like the the Tumblr post that's like uh, someone someone that tells so what was it some something something who says only lies and uh was like older brother. I was like I am not escaping these allegations. I love Rainbow Dash and it's because she's so fucking mean. I know. He's like, I love, I, I almost said he Rainbow Dash. He, him, Rainbow Dash? Real? Um, but anyway, I love Rainbow Dash. I think Rainbow Dash is really funny. And I think that some of her fans, like when bronies were a big thing, just didn't understand her. Like they wanted, everyone wanted Rainbow Dash to be their like mean Sundere wife. And I was like, you don't get her like I get her. She's a bra lesbian. She's a mean bra lesbian at the beginning. And she becomes nicer, but I don't feel like there's like a core of her that cannot change. It, or else it just wouldn't be Rainbow Dash anymore. But that's just my favorite pony. Oh my god, jumping Snoopy emoji. Hi. The description reminds me of one Genshin character, Ito, because they're both goofy guys with big hearts. And Applejack. See, I like Applejack for the same reasons that I like Rainbow Dash, but I also like her because she's not. She Applejack's a sweetie and she's like she's funny and polite, but she also can get a little she can get a little mean sometimes. <laughs> I think the difference between uh Rainbow Dash and Applejack is that Applejack is mean, but if you told her she would mean sh she was mean, she would feel bad. Whereas if Rainbow, if you told Rainbow Dash that you were being mean, she'd probably like be like, "Yeah, you're being a wimp," and like kind of giggle about it. Not actually, I do think she does care about like hurting people's feelings, but like she's also she's a little she's a little rude sometimes. Rarity was always my favorite. Also, it's 10 p.m. I did see. I'm I'm not too tired yet. I may keep drawing for a little bit, but then I'm gonna go to bed. If anyone has to go though, then like please no worries. Rarity is this funny too. All of them have their their own charm that I really enjoy. Um, I can't say that I dislike any of the main six for for real. Like I do enjoy them. I think the way that uh, people react to Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy kind of grinds my gears a little bit. Uh, but I do love both of them. Like, it's it's not their fault. It's like how people react to Marcel is not her fault. Uh, even if it drives me crazy sometimes. How she's, like, become the... The 
waifu of like the trad wife likers on Twitter. That's not Marcel's heart. She wouldn't like that. I think Artie's response to you saying she's being mean. Oh, it does depend on who sh you're being mean to. That's actually very true. I love Fluttershy's character development over time. Me too. Flutters Fluttershy was probably my favorite character. I, maybe she was my favorite. It's actually really hard because if I say she's my favorite, then I'm like, ah, but Applejack. Fluttershy, Applejack, and Rainbow... No, sorry. Fluttershy, Applejack, and Twilight are probably my favorites. Um, obviously, I love Pinkie Pie. It's impossible not to. But, like, she's just not my flavor of favorite character. I just enjoy her immensely, and I'm glad she's there. Um, one of my mutuals really likes Pinkie, though. And to be honest, also kind of reminds me of Pinkie Pie, so, like, it tracks... I just realized I have 75k clovers, Jesus Christ. The the lore, the l dating lore of how you started as a stream stan and then we started dating. Actually, I wouldn't describe you as a stan because you were always very polite in chat, which is why I was like, oh, this is a normal, normal guy. I'm sorry I'm late, I was watching the new Pokemon anime. Oh, no worries. Hurricane Fluttershy was an episode I watched all the time because I love the message. Applejack was my favorite was when I was, when I was like three or four, but I haven't watched- You were three or four when the show came out? Oh my god, you're like a baby. Sorry, I just- I forget that there were like children that were watching that as the actual intended age bracket for the show and not like a teenager or like a 12 year old watching My Little Pony. I was- I was in like ninth grade watching My Little Pony, but also I'm like- I'm built different. I always have liked kids shows. Also, I realized that anyone that was the actual intended age bracket for My Little Pony probably never had any interactions with the Brony fandom and has no idea what I'm talking about. So just know you live, you live a blessed existence. I was like seven or eight when I started watching. Like that makes sense. That tracks. That's the age bracket for it. Just like I, when. It was coming out, I was like just a little bit too old, so people were like, why do you like My Little Pony? But I also liked Care Bears, like I've always liked like shows like that. Um, and then, of course, because I was old enough to be online, I was like young enough to be interacting with people way older than me that were also in the same fan bases. Like some of my My Little Pony, and some of them were lovely people by the way, there's nothing wrong with being an adult that likes kids media, it's just like you have to be aware that what you're engaging with is also a children's franchise um because there were some people that would act insanely inappropriate with me when i was a kid online uh with in especially in the my little pony fandom but dating back to like when i started in the pokemon fandom as a kid i love care bears i have the care bears dvds too my favorite's wish bear i like wish bear very much i think that wish bear is cute well, actually, I think Wish Bear is one of my favorite, and then I also really like Bedtime Bear. And of course, I like the Care Bear Cousins. Uh, everyone is always like, oh, do you know the Care Bear Cousins? I'm like, of course I know the Care Bear Cousins. Tenderheart Raccoon is my favorite. His name was Tenderheart, right? Like, I'm not crazy. I'm pretty sure it was. Wish Bear was my favorite too. I Wish Bear stands rise. I mean, well, okay, am I surprised I wrote a comic about a, a comet shooting star making wishes and my audience likes the Care Bear named Wish Bear? Also, I can draw the Care Bears. Like, I've never drawn fan art of them before, but like, they're really fun and cute to draw. Okay, wait, because they're done by the... They're done by the same lady that did Strawberry Shortcake, so she has like a very specific eye style. It's less like that, and it's more like... It's more like they go above the eye? There we go, it's like a little more like it. Ah, uh, no let go. Actually, I think this might be the last thing I draw and then I go to bed because I'm getting hungry. No. 
I don't even think this is like a perfect rendition of the eyes, but they're they're pretty similar to this. And then they have like little mouths. Although I think the nose is bigger and it's like a heart nose. I know that. Yeah, here we go. And then the ears aren't super big, but they are like little barriers. I just think that that's wrong. Like that doesn't look right. And then this, I gotta redo because I gotta match it. I think the ears might be a little higher up on the head of your PNG tuber. Oh my god, I just realized my fat head is covering the, the bear though. I will move it. Damn, I'm not, I don't know the eyes, this problem. And also I think the cheeks are fluffier now that I think about it. I actually think they kind of go... Oh yeah, there we go. That's the Care Bear Cheek shake, Shape. But then they also come out on both sides like this. There we go. That's the Care Bear eyeballs. I don't know if they have eyebrows. I think they might. Hi, welcome in, Strawberry Cups. Sorry, I missed you. I was do I'm was i trying to draw Care Bear from memory, but it's been so long since I've watched the Care Bear shows. I know they have, like, the big bellies. And then they also have, like, these little arm tufts on the backs of their arms. Yes. I think it goes kind of like that. Um, and then I don't remember what Wish Bear's thing looks like. I'm sorry. I think it's a star, but I don't know. Yeah, they look something like this. I like them though. I love the, I love the Care Bears. It's so hard not to like them. It's like when people are mean to like Elmo, it makes me sad. I have a very good memory for character designs. I don't know what it is, but ever since I was a kid, I can kind of like... Oh, I watched one about all the kids turning evil and they took away the happy powers. I remember that episode very distinctly, actually. But yeah, I've always, I've always had a really good memory for character designs. It does nothing for me. Like, I did, being able to have someone be like, can you draw this character? And be like, yeah, probably. I've never drawn them before, but just like, let me think for a second. And being able to whip it out, it doesn't do anything, but... Anyway, I am going to try and find someone to raid, because it is late and I am hungry. Um, but we can go... Okay, someone I raided last time took us to a weird stream after they were done, so I'm going to do someone other than that person. Who is... There's a few different people doing art right now. This person doesn't have that many watchers. Who's this? Who is this person? <laughs> They're drawing a chibi character with a gun. Alright. Let's see. They're cute. They're cute. Hmm. hmm. No, this is not going to work only just because I think they're 18 plus only. Sorry, I know that there are kids in the chat, so we're not going to an 18 plus thing. I'm actually surprised, I didn't realize that there were 18 plus streams. Also, everyone's okay with another art stream, right? Also, no worries. Good night to everyone that does have to head out. Oh my god, this one's also 18 plus. What the? What do heck? Maybe I won't straight raid anyone. It doesn't look like anyone's live right now that I know personally. That's okay, though. We can just end for the night. And I will see you guys again on next Tuesday. Of course, thank you for watching. Uh, and good night. I will see you next week.